Hello, this is Hi. Uh, <laughs> I'm Tracy Ford with Community Mediation Maryland, and this is a demonstration of online mediation using the inclusive mediation style. I am Director of Quality Development for Community Mediation Maryland. We serve um, the community mediation centers, 15 community mediation centers across Maryland. And I'm going to let my colleagues who are with me introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Caroline Harmondero, and I will um, be helping out as one of the mediators today. Caroline is also an evaluator in the inclusive mediation process, as well as a trainer. Hi, I'm Lori Charcutian. I'm the executive director of Community Mediation Maryland, and excited to be one of the role play participants today. Hi, I'm Erica Bridge Ford, director of training at Community Mediation Maryland, and I am a role play participant today. All right, so um, you're gonna see us change um, our names at this point on the on the Zoom. So um, Lorg and Erica are going to be role play participants. So they're gonna change their name to their participant name. And just to help with uh, keeping it clear on who's who, um, Caroline and I, who are gonna be the mediators today, are just gonna add mediator um, to our name so that we are so it's clear who we are. Um, before we get into the demo, we do want to make sure that it is um, known at, at Community Mediation Maryland. Um, we do practice the inclusive mediation style and uh, of mediation and um, it's our belief that mediation is meant to happen with people in the same room talking to each other directly face to face. And so online mediation is our response to a global pandemic and making sure that um, despite all that's going on in the world right now that people have access to collaborative decision making opportunities. And, um, and so it is not meant to, for us, it's not meant to replace um, face to face com um, collaborative decision making process, but it's meant to address um, these very different times that we're dealing with. Um, and I wanna check in before we jump in, Lord, Erica, Caroline, anything you would add before we go into uh, the mediation process? All right. Oh, thanks everyone for being here. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, the other thing, uh, so what we're gonna be demonstrating is, Caroline and I will start off by demonstrating how as inclusive mediators, we would prepare for an online mediation. Note that uh, despite uh, Lorg and Erica being here, AKA Lisa in Virginia, that uh, we would not prepare with the participants online. So we would either have them, uh, we would get on to the, to the platform at least half an hour before and we would uh, in, uh, engage the waiting room. We, we are using Zoom, but we're not, uh, we, we feel like this process would work for pretty much any platform. Um, and we would do our prep before we had the, um, the participants uh, in the room with us. So, um, but for right now, they are, they are here, but uh, as gorgeous as they are, I try to ignore them right now and focus on. Caroline and me, okay. Do you want us to um, turn our cameras off? Huh? Do we turn our cameras off for the prep? Um, oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. So they like actually be gone. All right, cool. Hi. All right. How are you doing right. today? I am well. Thank you for asking. How about yourself? Great. Good. 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 Um. Before we get into too much else, is there anything skill-wise you want to, in particular, receive feedback on after um, after today's session? Yeah, I think, well, one of the things that I've been noticing with online is that um, there's a lot more sort of tripping over the end of someone else talking. Mm -hmm. um, so dealing, dealing with that gracefully, like stopping mm -hmm. and backing out, coming back in um, mm -hmm. when there is a breath. Um, and then also, um, 
you know, it's just so hard with eye contact. So trying to yeah. show attention to both, um, if you could be watching for that. Okay, all right. Um, like visibly attending to both. And then um, I think also just the fluidity of the brainstorming process. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Um, not having it be so clunky with the the document and the screen sharing and all that so that their ideas can flow okay yeah and i think um one of the things a couple of things um i think are important to make sure that we're just kind of acknowledging just how um you know this is all new for everybody you know and just asking for people's patience on the front end as we start step one and then um, we, we, we can talk about like how we wanna type and like whoever's typing, how they can be a support, you know, to, mm -hmm. to the person who, how the person not typing can be a support to the person who's typing. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Um, I think um, really, um, with something I'm working on is making sure that I'm, I'm actively saying who's the name of the person that I'm speaking to, mm. um, wh whether it's mm -hmm. reflecting or um, asking open-ended questions, because one of the things I've seen in, in role plays is that this confusion on who we're talking to, because we're ended upon looking at that person. Like right now, I think I'm looking at you because you're on my left, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident you don't feel looked at right now. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, so, you know, saying, you know, my reflection and, and, and saying deliberately that I'm, this is for Lisa, this is for Virginia, that kind of, mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, I think, I think that's the main thing and, and just kind of practicing breathing through any technical difficulties that may arise, you know, as opposed to relying on my old standby of panic. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so let's talk about, I've, I've uh, attached the consent to mediate to the, to the chat as well as the process map. Um, so I guess what we can do is, um, uh, as part of step one, we can, I can do a share screen on um, both of those um, when, when we get to, the, to those areas. Okay. And then um, whoever is reading it aloud will be able, we'll both be able to see it. Right. Um, the participants, in this case, the Mediation Center has um, had them sign it sign the consent to mediate already, but we still agree to to read the read it and check to see if they had any questions about the consent to mediate. Okay, great. Um and um I think this oh um you have the brainstorm um document. Yep, I have it up and ready and okay. I have a topic sheet up and ready. Okay, so what I'll do is when we when we get to that, I'll um I'll do a request for uh, control. You'll still be able to type and everything, um, but but you know if you need me to jump in and type or what have you, I can do that without um, us having to go through that process. In the I'm sorry, what's that? You'll so be able to get. Yeah, so when when we get to the brainstorm, when you pull up your document, when we mm -hmm. pull up that document, I, I'll do a request for control. You'll still okay. be able to type, but whenever you want me to jump in, I can jump in and we don't have to do that procedure in the middle. Right, okay, good. Okay, all right. Um, and topics, I think, um, and you pulled up, you, you have a topics document, right? Yes. Okay, all right, cool. Um, uh, anything else we need to, oh, how do we want to divvy up step one? Um, do you want to, well, usually I like to check in to see who's doing, um, I like to check in to see who is doing, um, um, um first reflections. First reflections. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, what, do you have a preference? 
I'm happy to give it a try. Okay. All right. Cool. And um, and then then I'll then I'll start off step one. Yeah. And um, as I finish that reflection, if I can, uh, if I still have the floor, I'll I'll say, um, Tracy, did you have anything to add? Okay. Perfect. I'm just pulling up. Um, I'm pulling up my um, mediation doc, my guide right now. Um, yeah, I had to print mine because I, I didn't think I would want to go back and forth. Yeah, you were right. Without have, seeming, seeming like I'm checking my email. <laughs> I'm pulling it up on my phone so that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so I can look at it on there. Um, okay, I'm just checking. Do you want to, um, do you, could you be the one to um, facilitate the framing of topics? Sure thing. I can. And then I can start the brainstorm and then we can switch off within the brainstorm. Mm -hmm. Um. I have, I've shared the co-hosting with you. Great. Um, and um, I will, um, once they come in, once we bring them in, I will lock the meeting for security purposes. Okay. All right. And um, I think I'm just checking through the, the guide to see if there's anything else where Forgetting. Oh, I'm going to set chat. Um, right now, I'm just going to set chat to, since we have the documents out, I'm going to set the chat so no one's uh, chatting privately. And I think that's it. Anything else you feel like we need to cover? No, oh, that's great. Okay. All right, well, let's bring our participants back. Bring our participants back. We're working on it, we're working on it. <laughs> right. Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you. Right. Um, thank you for joining us today. Just um, I'd like to start off by getting names. I'm Tracy. Um, My I'm name is Jalen. Oh, sorry. Um, and I'm, I'm, is it okay if we go by first names? Sure. Okay. All right. And I'm Virginia. All right. I'm Lisa. All right. Hi there. And it's my co-mediator. Um, and um, I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk about um, the, the process that we'll be using today. I'm sure that you've heard... Um, I'm sure you heard a lot of this before when you were um, being introduced to mediation and through the intake process, but we also, we always like to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we understand the process that we'll be using. Um, Caroline and I have been trained by Community Mediation Maryland to be your mediators and throughout this process, so we, to ensure that we are always giving everyone the same high quality process, you'll see us referring to our guides. So that's a lot of why we're looking down. We have our mediation guides before us and we wanna make sure that we're offering everybody the same high quality process. Um, the two of us have read and will abide by the Maryland standard of conduct for mediators throughout this mediation session. And you are welcome to request a copy of those standards from the mediation center or staff can direct you to a link um, that can, um, where you can read the standards of conduct, okay? Um, I want to share with you, I'm gonna share with you our mediation um, process. I've added that to the chat, um, that if you look to your right or there's a Zoom group chat and you can open up that file and I'm gonna share it so we can all re review it together. Um, all right, I mean, just a second. I'm not sure I can quite get it open. You're gonna put it up? I am gonna put it up so we can all, we can all be looking at it at the same time. I apologize for the, this is, um, 
a new process for us. So we just ask in advance for your patience as we uh, get to navigate some of the awkwardness of it at times. Well, it seems like everything is new and awkward right now. So feeling, uh, feeling unfamiliar with a lot of things that are going on. Is that right? But yeah, I mean, I'm doing my best, but. And um, and then in a little bit, we'll we'll have an opportunity to talk some more about it when we get in. And and right now, what we're in is um in the explain mediation process. So we're just talking about the um things that we're going um the the process that we'll be using today, and um and some of the things that you're talking about the unfamiliarity that you're discussing. You'll have a chance to talk about it more in step two, where we um in, in the information gathering stage, and when we get to step three. Um, we'll be, uh, throughout step two, we'll be listening for the specific things that you'd like to make decisions about. And in step three, we, um, make sure we, uh, Caroline and I will make sure that we understand, um, what those things are and we will list those topics that you may want to be use mediation to make decisions about. And in step four, we have a four step process where you will come up with solutions for the topics that you decided you wanted to make decisions about in mediation. And if you'd like, in step five, we can put that in a written agreement, okay? Any questions, comments, concerns about that? All right. Um, Caroline, um, would you mind talking about the big three? Sounds good. So there's three main principles in mediation. Um, the first is that we're non-judgmental. Our job is to listen, to ask questions, and try to clarify what's important to everyone here. We won't give advice, we won't take sides or decide who's right or wrong. Mediation is voluntary. We're all here of our own free will and can end the process at any time. You won't be forced to do anything that you don't wanna do in the process, and you won't be forced to agree to anything you don't wanna to agree to. As mediators, we maintain confidentiality except for issues of child abuse, abuse of vulnerable adults, and credible threats to do bodily harm. Those are things we may not keep confidential. This means that all <clears throat> other discussions in this mediation and the discussions you had with mediation program staff will stay private. There are two parts to confidentiality. One is what's said to others outside the mediation room, and the second is what can be brought into court or an administrative proceeding. In both circumstances, mediators and mediation program staff are committed to confidentiality. Participants are not allowed to say what happened in mediation in court or administrative proceedings. Participants can make decisions about what they can say outside of court, and in a minute we'll read a form that gives your consent to mediate today, which I think you've already um, turned in, but we're gonna review it again. That Perfect. form will explain confidentiality in more detail. We did an online signature thing for that one. Fantastic, thank you. Did we do um, that? I, I, we can double check and we'll read through and, and we, you'll have an opportunity to get any. I think I did some paperwork. Yeah. Okay. I had to download something. And um, it sounds like look, looking for some clarification about what it was or you're trying to, or is that about trying to recall what happened with the document? No, no, I think we did it is what I was saying. Okay. Is that what you were just talking about? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. The center, the center had let us know that they had those in place for you. Cause I was talking, okay. Cause yeah, I was talking to um, Megan on the phone. Okay. Thank you. Um, so um, as mediators, you'll see us destroy our notes at the end of the mediation. And you may also see us looking down at our notes throughout the mediation. Um, so, um, Was this case referred from court? No, I mean, she keeps saying she's going to no. evict I mean, I'm, I might have to have to call some people in, but right now, no, we're not in any Call some people in? What kind of a threat is that? agency or anything. What kind like of a threat that? is that? Call some people in? Which kind of people are you calling in? I'm just, I'm just saying, in? we're not in court right now. Things may go somewhere else. We'll, hopefully, you all can 
help her figure out how to do some things differently and we um, won't even have to go there. I'll be out as quickly as I can, as quickly as we can get through this. Okay, so it sounds like um, speed is something that's important to you. And um, and also some cons I'm hearing some um, fears about how the court may be involved in the future. And Virginia, I thought what I heard from you also was um, some sense of sort of faith and reassurance about that. Um, and in a minute, we're going to um, get to the listening stage where we, we all talk about what's happened so far. Um, but for now, since the process wasn't referred from court, we're going to um, go ahead and go over a couple of other things with you, if that's okay. And, um, and then we can get started and then you'll have a chance to discuss all the issues in mediation um, and make plans for what you'd both like to do in the future. Okay. Okay, um, so um, you mentioned time um, earlier, I think you had gone over a, t a two hour plan for this mediation. Are you still both able to continue until um, 11.30? Well, Michael yes. said he'd watch the kids. So I, I mean, we may get interrupted. Derek is sometimes more than he can handle, but I, I think we should be okay. Okay, so it sounds like feeling um, confident about your childcare plans, but also um, looking for some understanding of interruptions around what's going on with the kids. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let's see. Any questions about the actual process of mediation at this point? No. Tracy, do you want to go over the consent? Good thing. I'm going to do another shared screen. And I, again, know that you are familiar with the um, consent to mediate form, but we like to read it out loud to, and make sure that if you have any questions, that you have an opportunity to answer, ask any of the questions that um, may arise. Um, okay. Um, this is a consent to mediate for online mediation. By signing this form, I agree to participate in mediation conducted by this area um, community mediation center. I understand that the discussions in this mediation and those with the mediation program staff will remain confidential. This means that the mediators and staff will not share information gathered during the intake or during the mediation session with anyone outside of the program. All participants in the mediation other than the mediators are free to talk about what was said in mediation with others except, except not in a judicial administrator, administrative or other hearing or unless they agree otherwise in writing. Only the participants that were agreed on during the intake with the mediation center will be present at any point during the mediation. Participants are responsible for assuring that the space they will use while participating in the mediation will be private. The mediate, mediators and program staff will not voluntarily share any information from the mediation with any judicial, administrative, or other hearing. We, the mediation participants, will not voluntarily share this information in a judicial, administrative, or other hearing. It is our intention to comply with Annotated Code of Maryland Section 3-1802 and Judi Judiciary Rule Title 17, which states that mediators and mediation participants may not disclose or be compelled to disclose mediation communication in any, any judicial, administrative, or other proceeding. Information regarding child abuse, abuse of vulnerable adults, or credible threats to do bodily harm are exceptions to confidentiality and may be disclosed. Unless we agree otherwise in writing, any written agreement which comes out of mediation is not considered confidential. Agreements reached in mediation may be enforceable contracts. The mediators con conducting this session have read and consistent with state law, will abide with the Maryland standards of conduct for mediators during the mediation session. Participants are welcome to request a copy of these standards and a copy can be found at www.mdmediation.org. Mediation is a voluntary process and each participant may withdraw from the mediation process at any point during the mediation. In the mediation process, I will be responsible for making my own decisions. 
The mediators will facilitate the process and are prohibited from giving advice or suggestions. Because the decisions made here are mine, I will not hold BCMC liable for any decisions made here. The mediators are using an online platform provided by Zoom.us to conduct online mediation sessions. I understand that it is my responsibility to download and install the software and or apps from Zoom.us necessary to participate in online mediation sessions. Public access, Wi-Fi connections, such as those available in public spaces or free hotspots are not secure and may, not, and may put my information at risk. I'm accessing a secure Wi-Fi or Ethernet hardwire internet, internet connection on my computer. Virtual, and the virtual signature you went over when you signed the document. And so I just wanna check in, were there any questions about the consent to mediate form? No, this is the one. So I'm, we looked at this before, this was what I was asking about. I think okay, okay, great. all right. So feeling, feel, yeah, so you're feeling familiar with this and having done this before. Okay, so, and, and again, it's just part of our process to make sure that if you have any questions, you have a chance to talk about that before we proceed. Okay. All right, um, unless there are any questions about any of the things that we have gone over, Carolyn, I think we might, I think we're ready to move on to step two. Great, so what are the issues that have brought you both to mediation? Um, do you want to go first or you want me You're to go You're the one first? who's got all the complaints. You're the one who nothing. I mean, why don't you get started? Um, <clears throat> so, um, nothing I do is good enough. So my, my, Lisa is my daughter-in-law and, um, she is, um, married to my son, Mikey. And they often, you know, sometimes they go back and forth having some problems. Go back and, and forth having some problems. Having some problems because he fucks everything that moves. That's the kind of problems that we have. Okay. So I can, I, you know, sometimes men are going to be men, right? And that's not <laughs> right. That's not right. Men, he should not ever cheat on her. And that's one of the reasons why I'm like, you know, I'm, I was okay with her bringing the grandkids to come, you know, she came to stay for a while. Um, and it was really just supposed to be, you know, maybe, maybe two weeks or so, but then the pandemic hit and the governor said we had to stay in. And so now her and the grandkids. How am I supposed to look for, how am I supposed to look for a house now? I'm not, I'm not how saying I'm there was anything. Now? I'm not saying there was anything else you were supposed to do. I'm just telling the people that now we're stuck in the house together. Like now she can't go. And I'm happy to have the grandkids around. Like that has been a complete joy. Um, but now, you know, so because we're, uh, we ca she can't leave now, right? And so, you know, things have just been happening where, you know, we don't, we, we don't get along around some things. Um, I have, I have a few concerns about some stuff going on with the grandchildren. Um, concerns. And. It's a nothing children, is good enough because so I'm not willing to put up just with because, it. Just because they're stuck nothing in the house. Son, nothing else that I do is good enough. Just because they're st stuck in the house does not mean they should be like, they they shouldn't still be kids. Like they should still have fun and you know, they should still be kids. But anyway. And have um, some responsibility. And, and, I'm not she, gonna raise my kids to be spoiled brats like you raised your son who <laughs> then thinks that the world owes him. He gets to do whatever he wants. He gets to fuck whatever he wants. And his wife will just be sitting there waiting with the kids when he decides he wants to swing back by and be a father again. Yeah, I'm gonna raise my kids with a little more discipline than you raised your son, that's right. So anyway, I raised my son just fine, mm -hmm. first of all. And, sh and this, this conversation is not about how I raised Mikey. It is about it things that are happening in my house. Judging how I raised my kids. We wouldn't have to okay. talk about it. Well, while, while I'm able to see what's happening with those kids, you damn right I'm going to have something to say about it. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna have something to say about it. And while well, I know Mikey, I gotta just step away from something you gotta say about everything and close my door. Sometimes that's I gotta fine. Do that to protect that's me fine. The kids, the kids shouldn't have to be prisoners with you. But anyway, I know that Mikey is not perfect. Um, and you know, because I know he was wrong for cheating and stepping out on her, that's one of the reasons. His hands on me. You want to mention that too? So that accusation is a whole nother thing. I got a photo. But I, but because I figured, you know, she had some time, they had some time apart. She needed somewhere to stay. They and could I appreciate cool down. That. I mean, thank you for that. Thank you for that. They they could cool down. That sounds like a really grateful thank you, didn't it? I mean, didn't I that know. sound like a really grateful thank you? It is. I, I mean, I appreciate it. I just wish it didn't come with all the judgment and all the nastiness and all the comments. And I wish I wasn't fucking stuck here. Okay, so you said I should go first. Maybe you should go first because you have clearly you have a lot to say. You doing fine. You keep going. Okay, so I figured they would have some time apart to cool down, and you know maybe That's I could help problem. her think through yeah, since I know answer. Mikey better than anybody. I'm thinking maybe I can help her think about how to deal with things with him and they would work things out like they normally do. But then the pandemic hit and now even uh -huh. if she wanted to go back right now, you know, it's not safe. And so we we're just God knows what horse stuck is stuck in the house. that house. Thank you. Lisa, what's brought you to mediation? No, I mean, she basically said it. You know, she's uh, I do, I mean, for real, I appreciate having a place. Um, I got the kids and, um, you know, it would be hard like when, when I moved in, of course, we didn't know this pandemic was coming and um, I thought it would just be a little while and it's it's closer to my work. And um, I came this way because uh, Mikey, his work's kind of in the other direction. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but like we just figured this made more sense for me to come here with the kids than for him to come. But now, of course, nobody's working. We probably should have switched before we all got trapped. But now, anyways, it doesn't matter. We're all trapped. Um, Derek uh, needs a lot of special attention. Um, but both, you know, like Tanya, Vanessa, they're all, they're good kids. They just, it's, this is hard. It's hard for everybody. I mean, everybody's saying that and um, trying to have a little bit of structure and, um, you know, it was always important to have structure and, and, and um, have the kids have, have the things that they're supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, it's like, but now I, I only meant to be here for a couple of weeks and, um, and I was working things out and looking for housing and all that kind of thing. Anyways, so now we've been here while we're stuck here. It's been almost what, three months, two months, something like that. Feels like a million years. And uh, we agree all I do that. is get, huh? I said we agree on that. It's just yeah. one long day. It's been a very. It feels just like a long time. It doesn't stop. It just doesn't end, and it, and it's you know it's hard enough. I think it's hard for everybody, like we were saying at some point. And it's just, but with the constant criticism, mostly from Virginia. Sometimes her husband chimes in, and the two of them gang up on me. Criticism of the meals that I make. I'm trying, you know, trying to cook for the family. Um, they're a little bit older, so I'm the one who's going out doing the grocery shopping. And I, it's fine, you know, like I don't mind doing it. I go out once a week, I got my mask, I, you know, like, I, but you know, like nothing I do is good enough. That's one thing, but certainly in the meal. Well, well, it's not necessary for you to have to do all of that. The kids love my cooking. I can go out and get things like th there's, you don't put all of this extra pressure on yourself and it's not even necessary. And it's not like you're even a good cook. Like what? you're fucking up my, my pots and pans and stuff. All because you just got to prove that you can do everything by yourself. See, this is and the kind it's of ungrateful criticism of everything that I do. I burned one pot at one point because I wasn't. That's I, all. I'm not used to the. I had a gas stove. Now it's an electric stove. It's like just okay. So thing. then why even tr why even do it when the kids love my cooking anyway? It's not even necessary. Okay, fine. If you want to put on your mask and go outside and go to get the stuff to 
buy the food, that's great. But let me cook it. Like you're not even, what's the point? Anyways, this is my point. You see, here I am, I'm doing the shopping, I'm doing the cooking. All I get is criticism because I burnt one pot a while back. I told you I'd replace it. I haven't been able to get, you know, like those stores aren't open. You know, the stores with your fancy pots aren't open yet. And, um, and the, but, but, mo but mostly the bigger thing is the way that, you know, um, Tanya and Vanessa and even Derek can do some of the stuff around the house. And I intend to raise them to be responsible kids. And if you don't want to talk about Mikey, we don't have to talk about Mikey, but I'm raising my kids to be responsible kids. They got chores, they got tasks, they got things they're going to do. They're going to help with the cleaning. They're going to help with the cooking. And, and they're going to be stuck in one room all the time. And they're going to be stuck in one room all the time. They're either in front of a TV or working like a TV, Virginia. It's, it's a, they're on the computer because I mean, yes, sometimes we're watching Netflix, but, but they're also doing schoolwork, you know, like that's all on the computer now, you know, that and right? are they ever, so, so it's just it's sitting in front of a screen all day and then working the rest of the time. They're not grown ups. they're children. What do you want them to do? We're stuck in the house. They can still be children and have some fun. They can go in the yard. They, they, they can come yard? out. I would love to like see my grandchildren more. They're here in my house. Then I would love to be able to spend more time with them. You stop telling me that everything that I do is wrong. I'd let you see them more. That's, that's unbelievable. How about that? That's unbelievable. Do you want to write that down? She stops running her mouth. She gets to see the kids more. They said we could write down an agreement. Yeah, we're, um, thanks. I would, I, uh, throughout this listening step, we're going to be um, listening to you and asking questions and trying to reflect back on what we've heard, um, which I'm about to do in a second. And then when we get to step four, we'll have a chance to brainstorm all the possible ideas. And those can go into an agreement in step five if you both want. Um, so, but for now, Lisa, one of the things I think I'm hearing is that um, you're feeling judged and criticized in the house. Um, both of you talked about feeling really trapped during the pandemic. Yes. Um, it sounds like around communication um, that um, you really value um, <clears throat> direct communication, but also you're looking for kind of freedom around child rearing. Um, if I'm getting that right. And uh, it sounds like you feel really furious and betrayed around what's happened so far. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I mean, freedom, I don't know, you're talking to me, I want freedom. I think that I'm saying that the kids need to have structure. Some okay. freedom, but mostly they need to have structure and I'm trying to create that for them. I was trying to do that before and now it's especially important. I've been reading some of these articles about you know, keeping some kind of structure in place. Okay, so looking for structure and routine with the children and especially during the, during the shutdown, is that right? Yeah, and discipline, you know, having them grow up knowing they have to do some of the cooking and cleaning and be responsible. Yeah, so with the housework, I heard you talking about um, really valuing discipline and responsibility for children. Um, and you talked about some issues with food feeling, um, feeling judged and unappreciated when it comes to your own food prep and shopping. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and also worried about your kids and their well-being during this time. And you mentioned some special needs of Derek's. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Derek has some, um, some special needs. And we, we had like good structure and supports for him. We just had to like put him in a place um beforehand and it was just it was harder to adjust to that like the school took longer to figure out how to give us supports and but like we're good I mean we're getting there I just don't you know I don't need constant criticism on top of all the challenges okay um so feeling feeling judged and um and looking for communication that doesn't have as much criticism in it mm -hmm. so um Virginia um, I think I heard you also talking about feeling kind of stuck and trapped. Um, you mentioned uh, feeling concerned about the children and um, 
valuing childhood for children um, and also uh, feeling joy about your grandchildren being with you. Is that right? Yes. Um, and you talked about um, the situation with Mikey. You mentioned um, feeling like men are men, but also valuing fidelity and um, faithfulness um, and feeling disappointed in his behavior. Is that right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Did you tell him that? Have you ever told him that? First of all, I am not some woman that's just okay with men going around cheating on their wives. I feel like you all took vows and he should be sticking to those vows and Maybe he should, should talk to you. Him. First, I don't have to, do I have to tell you about every conversation I have with my son? Yeah. Over the years, help. when he stepped out on you, I absolutely dig in his shit and tell him when he's wrong. I don't have a problem telling my son when he's wrong and he knows that. Well, then why are you so critical of me when I decide to finally take a step to say like enough is enough? I'm not being, what I'm saying is marriage is hard work. And if you just give up just because things are a little bit difficult, with, what, do you want to be divorced and then out of it rethinking? What if I had done this? What if I had tried that? You want, before what if you I had get done out, what? what else could I do? I have been around in this life much longer than you have. And I'm telling you, you want to make sure, you want to be sure, sure that you're absolutely done and that you tried everything you could possibly do sure. before your whole family is I'm separated. Sure. You want to just, sure. you want to be sure. I'm sure. And I don't need your advice on that one. And, and um, so I think I'm hearing Lisa, like feeling confident about some of the decisions that you've made around your marriage. Is that right? Yeah, I am sure. I am and, so sure. And it, and it sounds like having your decisions respected and honored is something that's important to you. Right. Cause it's none of her fucking business ultimately. And, and um, Virginia, I think I'm hearing you saying like, um, uh, feeling, feeling um, like, protecting protecting marriage is something that's important to you and and um and putting for, forth all of your effort in marriage is something that you're looking for is that right absolutely i just i mean i i know i understand that right now while she's in it is is bad i get that it feels really horrible and i i do know mikey better than anybody and i think that they're you know maybe I can help her think about what are different ways to deal with this situation. Why don't you help him? Why don't you so help him? I'm doing both things. things. I'm doing both things. I'm saying different ways to keep his dick in his pants. How about that? I'm doing, I'm talking to him as well. And I don't think, I think often women don't understand. I'm not saying that he's right for what he's doing. I'm saying, I think there are times when women don't understand things that they also do to make men feel alienated and unappreciated and whatever else that makes it more tempting to them to go find comfort okay, somewhere so else. He shouldn't do it. I'm so not saying- it's my fault. Okay. I'm so saying- it's my fault that your son is a cheating son of a bitch. I got it. Now it's my fault. Okay. And this is it right here. See how she just doesn't listen. I'm, I'm clearly saying he's wrong. I'm saying that he's wrong and that you could, people need advice and help from other people. What's so wrong with getting advice from somebody who knows him and can help you think through what are some ways that you could deal with him before he cheats and even after it happens? Okay. So I'm sorry, Lisa, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, so, so Virginia, I think I'm hearing you saying like using, it's important to you to use your experience um, um, as, and, um, and, and your relationship with Mikey and your, your understanding of Mikey to support uh, Lisa and Mikey's marriage. Is that right? That's absolutely right. You know, and I think I that's the... She doesn't get that, uh, that I, that's, that's my job as a mother. Like when, when he married her, I also gained a, a new daughter and now grandchildren. And so I can't just sit back and watch things blowing up and not do my part to say anything that I think will help out in the situation. And that's all I'm trying to do in relation to their relationship. You know, and I don't tell you 
how you should have your relationship with Michael. I don't know anything about it. I don't need to know. I don't care. I have my suspicions given how Mikey acts, given how what you put up with, what you think I should put up with, given how you raise me. I got my suspicions, but I keep my mouth shut because it's none of my business. And I appreciate that you love Tanya and Vanessa and Derek. I do appreciate that. And I appreciate that I'm here right now because if we were out on the streets, if we were in a shelter, all that would be worse. I do appreciate that. But I do not appreciate and I never want your mouth telling me about my relationship with your son who is soon to be my ex-husband because I am not going back to that bullshit. And I don't, don't need to hear from you all the time about that and about how I should raise my children. Well, if, the, if I'm seeing things happen in my house, be very clear. That's an, I'm not going to just be silent. I'm about clear. Things. That's why I closed the door. And, 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 and trap the children in there with you. Okay, that's healthy. Well, you got a choice. Keep your mouth shut and we'll come out and hang out in the rest of the house. Run your mouth and I'll close the door. Okay, and keep them cooped up and I'll have to call people too. Like... We can make threats all day. We can make threats all day. That's the, That's the threats. That's what we I'm can make threats all day. You're you're threatening to keep my grandkids away from me. What? How am I supposed to respond to that? And and I, I want to. I'm I'm sorry, Caroline. You were about to say. Oh no, go ahead. Um, Lisa, it sounded like you were feeling bombarded by criticism, and looking for some ideas around communication that got you boundaries. Um, particularly, um, and, and around yeah, children. boundaries, that's, a, that's actually, that's a really good word boundaries. I'm and not bombarding her with criticism. I am giving her advice about my uh, son. That's like it. Boundaries. I know my son. I'm giving her advice about my son. And Virginia, I think I'm hearing you saying like feeling unheard and being able to talk about the family and the family needs is something that's important to you and being able to share your, your experience and advice and, and when it comes to communication is something that's important to you. And right. worried about what's happening with the children's activities, is that right? Absolutely, and I think something, so even, let's say, okay, even if she's gonna leave him, still navigating that situation is gonna be way harder than she thinks. It's not just as simple as, oh, I'm taking my kids, fuck it, I'm out of here. And like, you just never talk to the man again. She's gonna have to still deal with Mikey, right. But the way that she deals with him, she could use some advice how to make even a divorce not as messy and as ugly as it could be. And I don't think she understands that I have any wisdom in being able to help her even think that part through about how to deal with my son. So it sounds like you're um, being, a help, being helpful is important to you and, um, and sharing wisdom. And you talked, you're mentioning about sort of peace in the relationship, no matter what the outcome of it is, That's right. um, is important to you. Um, and it sounds like when it comes to the children's activities, you, um, you've mentioned being outdoors, you've mentioned being important to you, but also connection with you and having time together that's right. is something that's, that's right. important to you. Is that right? That's right. I mean, one, uh, one of the best things about you know, if there's anything we can say is quote unquote good about the pandemic is that like, I don't, because they have busy lives and, you know, I, we, and I haven't been able to see the grandchildren as much as I'm there in my house now. And so like, I would love to just for this to be a time where I'm able to build a stronger connection and bond with them because eventually this thing will be over and everything will open back up and then she'll find somewhere else to live or she'll go back home or whatever will happen and it'll go back to I won't see them as often again especially with trying to get back on track with their lives after you know having been shut down so long I think it'll be even like harder to connect with them afterwards. And so I want to, this time is precious to me that I actually get to see them and only seeing them at dinner time mostly or meals or, you know, whatever. It's really hard. So it looks like you're, 
it sounds like you're looking for more um, freedom of interaction with them and access to them. Yes. Um, and that you feel protective of this special time with them. Yes. Um, and that you're hoping, uh, you're feeling hopeful about the relationship continuing well after the pandemic is subsided. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Um, and then, uh, Lisa, I thought I was hearing from you about um, the children's activities around um, discipline and structure and looking for some support for um, privacy with the children, but also um, having, uh, um, you mentioned the time for um, school activities and access to technology for um, being able to um, continue not only with entertainment, but with all of their educational demands online. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, so what happens is this, we had whatever, like, I don't know, a couple weeks, I was here thinking I was only going to be here for a couple weeks, a month at the most. And, um, and some of this started then, but it wasn't as big of a deal. Like, you know, Tanya and Vanessa have their chores, I have them doing things, we model, like we're guests in this house, like, yeah, it's Grammy and Poppy's house, but we're guests in this house. And, um, and we're showing, um, uh, you know, showing them what that looks like. And there was a little bit of like, Virginia being like, let kids be kids. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you know, they've got chores, they've got to do their pieces, right? So that's, that's like, um, sort of how it started, but it was okay, because they were going to school, and I was going to work. And you know, we were like doing those pieces. Um, but then, when the pandemic started, we were stuck here. And, and then it became like really important to have that discipline. And, um, you know, they've got online, they've got, you know, this, this whole thing with the school and, you know, just keeping track of like, I'm still supposed to be doing some work and Tanya is supposed to be on Zoom with her math teacher at 10. And, you know, like it's a little bit hectic, but like the structure becomes so much more important to, you know, put that in place. And so then there we are, you know, sitting in the living room with, the computer and the phone trying to have like, you know, everybody getting their school stuff and I'm trying to do my work stuff. And, um, and Virginia's running around mumbling about kids, you know, kids need to play outside, kids need to be kids. And I'm like, kids need to get their schoolwork done even in the middle of a freaking pandemic. Um, and so finally I'm like, fuck it. I'm just like, you know, like our room, it's comfortable. It's, you know, like, so I'm like, we're just gonna, you know, do the schoolwork in the room because, um, at least she's not running around mumbling about kids need to play outside. Like it's hard enough for me to manage, um, you know, they're really good kids. I'm really lucky. Like I've got, you know, friends of mine who are telling me their kids are like bouncing off the freaking walls and I feel really lucky, but I don't need to be undermined ever. And I especially don't need to be undermined when like this really hard time and I'm trying to put, like I'm trying to put these pieces in place for the kids. And so, so yeah, like I, I don't want to be stuck in our room either, frankly, like I would much rather we could have some, um, I, I didn't even rather... realize, I didn't even realize I was on me, but that's the shit I'm talking about right there. Like, so you're saying maybe I'm going back and forth more often. Maybe you should put yourself on mute when you're walking around the house. Cause I finally got to finish a fucking sentence. You're, you're very funny. And but what you can see right there is I actually was listening to what you were saying. And so if you had some kind of if you had some kind of problem with me walking past mumbling, saying whatever I was saying, you could have you you responded to it by just locking you and the kids in the room all the time. You didn't tell me anything about whatever you thought. You did I not. You you so little snot. You. I forwarded the email to you from the school. It said, here's what we recommend. I said, this is what I'm trying to do with the kids. That is not the same thing as them. Even when they were in school, they had recess. They could do fun things. And, and that's not what's happening right now. You are so bent on all of the structure that they don't get to have any just like, okay, I'm just free to be a kid and have a little bit of fun. And they are good kids. We agree on that. And there are other kids right now bouncing off the walls and giving up their family shit right now. 
And these kids are not doing that, which is all the more reason I think they need some downtime, some time to see. So they're going to remember this pandemic time for the rest of their lives. And I don't want them to mostly remember that it was some kind of boot camp that they were in. Like, they should also have some fun and spend more time with their grandparents and even us as a family. Like, it shouldn't just be all structure, structure, structure. But whatever the problem is, if you didn't like something I was saying, you could have said that to me and we could have talked about it. And that's, but you just, you just shut. An email when you're right in my fucking house. Like, you can't say something to me right in my house. And I'm supposed to read your mind and know that this email about what the school says, it dictates how you're raising your kids during a fucking pandemic i'm supposed to know that we i tried to tell you we i the first few weeks about this i told you about how i told you it was important for derek because of his special needs i told you that i wanted all you heard all you heard i didn't even say anything about mikey and all you heard was criticism of like you fucked mikey up by by spoiling him rotten when I was telling you how I want to raise my kids, you criticized me. It wasn't you good. Were then, the you, you were throwing shade. You were throwing shade. You were throwing shade in it. You weren't, you talked about your kids, but just like you've been throwing shade all through this conversation, you also were throwing shade about how I raised Mike. <laughs> Let's be real. Okay. All right. <laughs> because. I walked into your house with you criticizing me for walking out on him after I found, I don't know how many freaking text messages, phone messages, credit card bills, thongs that were left around from somebody else. Like, I don't know how much more of that you expected to come up with. I told you about the final reason that I walked out of the house. While I was out with the kids at a doctor's appointment, for God's sake. Virginia. It's like the level of disrespect in the way that he fucks around is beyond belief. But anyways, put that aside for a minute. I came into the house. I told you how I want to raise the kids. Maybe you were criti felt criticized in the way that I did that, but I was clear. And then when you didn't respect that, when you fought back against it, when you said kids need to be kids, then I shared with you the emails from the schools because I wanted you to see, did you even check your emails? You don't even check I mean, it. sometimes I do, but I it's not, I'm, I'm from the old school. I'm from the old school where people actually at okay. the least pick up a phone and call each other, but you didn't even have to pick up a phone because you're right in my house. So I would expect that I wouldn't get an email about something you have to say to me. I would expect that you would actually like, okay. you know, okay. come downstairs and maybe say it to my face. Okay. So I'll just say this and then, and then, and then I'm done. I just, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm just saying, I just need to say this. The reason I sent you the email is because I wanted you to see that the structures that I was putting in place was not just me. It's not just a disagreement between you and me, but these experts who understand what it is the kids need, what they need during the pandemic and what they need to stay like to not have the like slide. I think that's what they're calling it. Lose the information from school is a little bit of structure. I just wanted you to know it wasn't just about you and me in an argument that I was trying to follow the guidelines from these experts. And that's why I sent you the email. So now okay, so maybe next me. maybe next time we can talk about whatever okay. email you're okay. sending me. Okay. And now I'm saying just... it to you. Now I'm saying it to your face like you're in the next room but I'm saying it to your face. Here's okay, but and sh and shouldn't yeah. they also have some fun? Did the teachers did the experts not send also any recess information or ways that the kids could decompress? Did they not send any of that? Because I don't ever see them doing anything that looks like that. We do. They do have the phys ed online, and they do the calisthenics in the room when the phys ed online comes on. So they do have that, and they have to do the little activities that comes in with the online phys ed. But we could do a better schedule. I'm not opposed to doing a better schedule. I'm not even opposed to you helping out a little bit with the schedule that they have. I just... Me, little old me? Don't, don't act like that. Don't act like that. Don't act like that. I'm saying... 
it doesn't have to be this way. I'm just like, I've been, I've said that. I just, I can't, every time we start to have another conversation, it comes back to what I should have done differently and how I should have put up with Mikey's bullshit. And I can't do that anymore. So if you want to make plans about kids, you want to talk about what it is that we're going to do to survive this freaking pandemic together. And you want to spend more time with the kids. I'm open to that. I just don't want to hear any more about Mikey. That, that's it. And if we can agree to that, then we can do anything else. So, um, Lisa, it sounds like you have some specific ideas around communication that get you the boundaries that, you look, that you're looking for. And also, they get the respect that you're looking for around the decisions you've made. Um, and, um, and it sounds like um, looking for more privacy about um, communication around Mikey and, um, or Michael. And is that right? No, Mike, Michael is my husband. Mikey is my son. Okay, uh, my apologies. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. And um, Virginia, I think I'm hearing you saying like um, that you you felt um, alienated and ostracized from the from your grandchildren, and really excited about the opportunity um, provided by the quarantine to be able to get closer to them. And and it sounds like um, in terms of activities like. Um, looking for some assurances around uh, uh, fun and, um, and 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 protecting their their ability to be children is something that's important to you when it comes to activities. Is that right? Yes. And um, and I guess earlier I heard you talk um, about um, I heard you each talk about uh meals um uh, meals um uh, caroline i think you were calling it food prep and and um and it, it sounded like you um lisa again you were feeling um feeling feeling judged and blamed about what was going on with meals and and virginia i think i'm hearing you saying like feeling feeling exasperated and confused about some of the decisions that were that were being made around milk so so can y'all talk about yeah, she just okay milk. so i'm not sure where she learned to cook but evidently they did not use spices and anything that makes her flavorful Lord is what we don't use okay so she just her food doesn't taste good and kids you know especially in the midst of being stuck in the house and having fried lard structure in a box all day i'm not making fried lard like i make this lasagna that's completely amazing and the kids really love it and i'm a good cook you know like and everybody has different talents and cooking is just not one of her talents but yet I guess because she has this feeling of like she has to be like earning her keep and doing things like this is one area she doesn't have to touch. I can make the meals. Everybody likes my cooking. And then she fucks up stuff. So she taught. Yeah, she did. Absolutely. She she burns. Mikey is not going to these other women because of their cooking. He's going. We're not talking about we're not talking. Okay, he's going to them because he's fucking them. I get it. We're not talking about the food. I don't know. I don't. I don't know all. What are all the reasons why Mikey is stepping out? But while you are in my house, I'm just saying you don't need to be running around doing things that a you're not good at, but b you're fucking up my stuff in the process. Just so one pot, just one pot, and I'll pay. It wasn't for just it. one. It wasn't just one pot. Yes, you did mess up that one because you burnt something, but also you don't understand Teflon evidently, and so she used some spatula or something, and she was doing something in a pan, and, and so she messed up one of my really good teflon pants and that shit costs money i'm gonna pay for it i just have it i mean i'll give you the money now i was gonna go buy it but i can't get to the freaking cookware store because apparently they're not essential we can order shit online but the point is i don't want to have to spend extra money on something that you don't have to be touching in the first place and i can just be the be the one doing in the kitchen doing shit because they also she took one of my really good dish towels and she's wiping the freaking floor with it like she does not under the kitchen is just not her arena okay well you you know what why don't you make a list of all of your kitchen you can give me a tour 
of what dish towel gets used on the counter and what dish towel gets used on the floor and what dish towel gets used on your face. I don't understand what your extra special rules are that you have to have, but I'm happy to follow your extra special rules in the kitchen. It's not extra what, special. You don't use this towels on the floor ever. That's not an extra special thing. The That's floor just basic shit. I had just cleaned the floor and then there was a spill and so we just wiped it up. We have paper towels to wipe things up with. There, all my okay. point is, it's fun. they're not extra special rules. You don't need to be in there doing anything with meals in the first place, and okay. none of this will I'm be happening. That's help. all I'm saying. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help. I get and it, I'm but this is not an area you need to help in, really, okay. because you're not good. You just do you think your food tastes good? Yeah, I do. So, um, and it's healthy. It sounds like you're, uh, something that I'm hearing from both of you is that you're really wanting to help out. Um, and also that you're both looking for tasty food. And um, it sounds like, uh, Virginia, you felt disrespected by how some of your equipment was being used. Um, and also, Lisa, it sounds like you're feeling unappreciated for the work that you've done to prepare food um, for the household. Is that right? Yeah. And um we do have different cooking styles and, and she does fry more than I do. I think my food is a little healthier, but it I'm not it frying has, the lasagna. It has taste. Uh, and that's so, what I'm um, like it's part of like the theme of nothing I do is good enough. And I don't you know what I don't even care. It's not like I'm trying to open a restaurant. I'm just I'm trying to help out. I'm trying to keep the kids fed. I'm trying to keep the house clean. That the house is cleaner than it's ever been since we've been here cleaning it. Um, okay, well, how that's that part is fine, but don't you feel stressed out just listening to the list of shit that you are right now running down? You have enough to do. You have the stuff with Derek, with like a dish towel rule and a paper towel rule and a Teflon rule. Doesn't that stress you out? It does not because they're not rules to me. It's just how you do shit. Like, but what I'm saying is you have enough to deal with. You got all of the structure you're trying to keep. You got shit with Derek. You got shit with Mikey. You got enough going on. Cooking is not even what you're good at. Why are you touching it? Let it go. You don't okay. have to do okay. everything. Okay. Okay. So Virginia, it sounds like relieving some of the family stress is something that's important to you. Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. Just as important it is is to her to like earn her keep and be helpful around the house they are my family and i am a mother and a grandmother and i know that it's stressful all of us being in the house together and so it's been a long time since i had you know children and people in my house to really take care of like that like for my husband i just have to basically cook and you know i don't get to really take care of people anymore and so having them there and having people that really cook for and make big meals and all of that kind of stuff i love doing those things and because it, it, it feels good as a family and then she comes in with all of her nervous energy all over the kitchen and fucking shit up and the food doesn't even taste good so it sounds like you're looking for joy and connection through food, but also some control over your kitchen. Is that right? That's exactly right. Okay. That's right. So Tracy, I'm feeling like we've started to get some sense of some of the topics um, that they're looking to make decisions about. How are you feeling in terms of the stages of the mediation and time and stuff? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the fourth wall right now and say that I think in most mediations, Caroline and I would have spent um, some more time in step two. Um, we do have a, um, a good sense of, of topics and, and what's going on right now, but we are, um, for, the, for the sake of the time, and um, we are going to stop here and move into step three. But just, just know like it's not uncommon for um, the information stage of the process to go on for longer. Um, okay, and then um, can I just pause for our participants, by the way? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very right. confusing to me to have um, the wrong person interested in many rules for the kitchen, but I'll, I'll press on. I'll press on. Um, Let me yeah. tell you something. Muffin is the person that makes sure rules are kept in the kitchen. I have I nothing to do with that in real life. I could see that. <laughs> 
Um, so Tracy, can I just confirm with you that you would be framing topics and I would be typing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going back in, fourth wall, reestablish. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so we are, I apologize, I'm looking back at, our, at uh, my mediation guide. So we're moving into the um, third step of the process, unless there are other things you feel like um, we need to know before we move into the next step. Nope. Okay. So in this step, um, Carol and I will be working to make sure that we understand the specific things that you'd like to be making decisions about. And um, we'll be checking in with you to see um, what, um, what the specific topics are on the topic. So there may be things that you just have been talking about, or there may be things that you'd like to use me mediation to make decisions about. So um, I want to check in one of the... Um, we well, said boundaries, that would be good. So it sounds like there, and at least I think I'm, I'm, I heard a few areas where you were looking for boundaries around communication and around the children's activities, mm -hmm. maybe even around the meals. And so I want to check in with those specific areas where you wanted to get to get those boundaries. And, um, and um, so I start with uh, children's activities. And I think if I understand correctly, for you, Virginia, children's activities was about um getting assurances around um fun and and uh, physical activity for for your grandchildren was something that was important to you and i want to make sure i have their names it, it was Ta tanya vanessa and derek is that right yes and um for you lisa around children but, but also what i want to connect with them in different kinds of activities too all right and so and, and so there was like making sure there was time for the family and and, and maximizing the, the the opportunity provided by the quarantine was something that was important that's to. right yeah and um and lisa for you around uh children's activity i think i, I was hearing like the structure and discipline um, was something that was important to you around children's activities. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, like in general, that's true. And then specifically now, I think it's even more important. All right, and and I think like um, what part of that was taking um, uh, taking seriously recommendation recommendations around uh, children, profession folks who are professionals around children's health and mental health is something that was important well, education yeah. how the decisions got made hmm? experts in education it was from the school about how okay. they could not have um like i can't remember what they call it like losing like losing the stuff they learn whatever they call that okay I can't okay so so using using that that uh utilizing that data was something that was important to you and how those decisions around the children activities got made is that right okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So are children's activities one of the topics that uh, that you're talking about in, in terms of uh, the, the conflict? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, screen share the list so that we can see it. We can all see it as it's developing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And um, another topic I think I heard you each discuss was around, um, I'm not sure, I'm, I've, I've been calling it meals and please let me know if that, that doesn't work, but it, it sounds like um, around meals, Virginia, that, I mean, I'm sorry, around meals, Lisa, um, something that was important to you was um, being able to contribute to a household, um, uh, to the to responsibilities in the household, and also looking for meals to happen in a way that, um, that took into consideration health. Is that right? Yeah. I want to be healthy. Something. Hmm? It's not like I missed yeah, something. Yeah, healthy. yeah. I mean, she cooks it a little more you know, fat and stuff than I would. It's not a big deal, but yeah. And, and, and I think that I should be doing some of that too. Some, okay. of the cleaning, some of the cleaning. So looking for shared responsibility when it comes to meals, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
And Virginia, I think for you, um, like, I think I heard you saying around Mills, like feeling really excited around um, uh, the opportunity um, to have to share meals with your family and that um, and and just kind of the quality of the, of the taste is something that's really important to you with the meals and also protect yes. p- protecting your um, your uh, your your cooking utensils and and kind of the peacefulness of the kitchen is something that's important to you when it comes to meals. Is that correct? That's right. Yes, that's right. So is our, so how does the language meals work for everybody? That works for me. Cause for me, it covers like the things that happen with my pots and pans and stuff. It only happens because she's in there trying to cook and it's just not, it's not necessary. And since she likes structure, maybe you can get, I like structure in the kitchen. Um, structure for the kids. I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, uh, and Lisa, what are your thoughts about the language of meals as, as the topic? No, that's fine. We can work on meals. Okay. Thank you. Um, and another topic I think I heard you each discuss was around, um, communication and, for you, Virginia, it sounded like uh, when it came to communication that you were feeling um, like being looking for communication to be direct is something that's important to you, and also um, being able to to be heard and to share your wisdom is something that's important to you when it comes to communication. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And and Lisa, I think if I understand correctly, that when it comes to communication, um, boundaries, particularly around your relationship with Mikey, is something that's important to you around communication. And also looking for communication to happen in a way that um, that uh, conveys respect. And because I think earlier you were saying when it came to communication that you were feeling um, feeling attacked and abused it sometimes when it comes to communication. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, basically I think if she would just not talk about Mikey, I mean, like, I think it's probably best for us just not to talk about Mikey, you know, like not me give my side, not her give her side, just not talk about it. And if she could be more respectful about um, how, I raised the kids, you know, and I'm fine with her spending more time. We could talk about that. But if she would just be respectful and talking to me about how I raised the kids and um, not talk about Mikey, I think, I, I think we'd be fine with communication. I mean, I think it wouldn't be a problem. So it sounds like you have some specific ideas that would get to the boundaries and the respect that you're looking for. Is that right? So is communication a topic for us to list as part of what was that, what is going on? Well, sure. I don't think it has to be that complicated, but yeah. Okay. And yeah, because but it is because I think a lot of times she doesn't. Um, I don't. I don't know that she hears anything if it's not exactly said the way she wants to hear it, and maybe there's something I'm saying wrong that makes her just like automatically think I'm criticizing. But giving advice is not always a criticism. Um, And talking about what I know about my son, whether she leaves him or not, can still be helpful information that she can use in dealing with him. And so I'm not trying to get in, you know, their relationship, but their relationship is now impacting my life in a much deeper way because she's here. He's here. Like, and so now things that maybe I wouldn't have been aware of before, now I'm hearing it and I'm seeing it and I'm seeing how it impacts her and it impacts the children. And when, when her children are grown and going through this, I think she'll understand more how as a mother, you don't just watch those things and say absolutely nothing when you know you at least have a little bit of insight or advice, whether she takes it or not that's different, but to just discount that anything I'm saying could be helpful about what I know about my own child even is just. And 
And so I want to check in on, on some of the things that were said. Lisa, earlier, uh, just a little bit ago, you were, I think it, I heard you saying you, uh, it, uh, that you're looking to keep the decision making around communication simple and that you had specific ideas around um, uh, that felt simple and also that, that, that got you the respect that you were looking for and the, and the boundaries that you're looking for. And when we get to the, the very next step in this process, you'll have an opportunity to come up with all the ideas um, or both of you have an opportunity to come up with all the ideas to get those those boundaries and, and the respect that you're looking for. And Virginia, I think I'm hearing you saying like, um, one, looking for some assurances around having communication happen in a way that gets the, the directness that you're looking for. And also that uh, takes advantage of some of your observations. And um, since y'all have been uh, living together, but also some of your um, observations over the years that you've been alive. Is that right? That's right. Okay. And um, Tracy, I was also hearing in terms of values um, around communication, it sounded like Lisa was looking for non-judgment as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, and so I want to check in. Um, we have communication, meals, and children's activities. If you were to um, get, get um, resolution on these topics, do you think the conflict would be resolved? I think so. Because in the mm. talking about my pots and pans and stuff. Children's activities, that includes like chores, because they, you know, need to be helping out around the house. Too. Oh, that is, that's a, that's a really good one. Right. And that okay. would keep also from destroying my tiles. If you think something needs to be wiped up. I'm sorry. Um, I said it would also keep you from destroying my tiles. If you think something needs to be wiped up. Yeah, paper towels. I'm in. And so, uh, I, I, thank you. I, I it, it sounds like another topic that, that, that keeps coming up is around housework. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And um, and for you, Virginia, um, I think um, looking for housework to happen in a way that um, uh, again protects the, the the children's ability to have fun and enjoy themselves, and also that also protects your items in the household. Is that right? Sorry, I have dogs in the house, so I was muting sometimes. Yes. Okay. Okay, and and Lisa, for you, it, I think um, when it comes to housework, like shared accountability and shared responsibility around um, the task around the house is something that's important to you, and and, and being um, uh, uh, contributing contributing around those uh, that topic is something that's important to you, and having and teaching the children. Um, yes, responsibility is something that's important to you around housework. Is that right? That's exactly right. So, so is housework another topic to list as, as part of what's been going on in the conflict? I think yes. So. Okay. Is that a is that a broadening of meals or is that a new topic? It's a no, new topic. No, it's, so, it's yeah. different. Yeah. I, I think it's something different. I agree. All right. So, with uh, housework, communication, meals, and children's activities. Um, if you were to come to um, decisions together around those topics, would the conflict be resolved? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. All right. So, so those are the topics you'll have an opportunity to work on in mediation, and that is a living list. So, if if there are new topics come up, we can we can um, um, add those to the list if you feel like it would be helpful. All right, so um, our next step is step four. And at this point, I'm bringing down the fourth wall again, and we are going to take a break um, and we will come back. So Lisa and um, er Lorig and Erica will be joining us <laughs> right now. And um, we are going to take a, a 30 minute break as a, as a team. And when we come back, we will 
um, jump into step two, which is brain brainstorming and developing solutions. Step, step four. Step four. What did I say? Two. Step right. Step four. Pandemic brain. You have pandemic right, brain. Right, right, right. Step necessary. four is brainstorming. Quarantine brain. Quarantine <laughs> brain. Um, are you gonna stop recording? Hi, thanks. Um, thanks for coming back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with step four, um, which is brainstorming and developing solutions together. So um, as we move into the solution phase, the earlier part of the mediation was focused on the past. And now that you've used the past to have a discussion and define a list of topics, the rest of the mediation will be focused on the future. So um, we're going to go ahead and focus on one topic at a time. We'll start by asking you to say any possible solutions you can think of. And all ideas will be typed up and later you'll pick just the ones you agree to and then you'll make any needed adjustments. And once you've decided on the ideas that you want, you'll work out the details about what will be needed to make the ideas work. Throughout the brainstorming process, you can be as creative as you'd like. So, um, Looking at, I'm going to put up a brainstorming sheet through share screen and looking at the topics at the top, um, I'm going to ask you all to select which one you'd like to work on first. And this is, um, this is what we'll start with. Can you see that? Yeah. And then yeah, I can Tracy, see. Do you want to get access to this too at this point? Yes, that'd be good. I will request right now. Okay. Okay. And so looking at children's activities, meals, communication, or housework, which is the one you'd like to start with? Um I really, it really doesn't matter to me. Maybe communication, because I think um, that'll help with a lot of things. What'd you say? Yeah, if you fix the way you talk to me, it would solve a lot of other problems. Okay, so are you both okay with starting with communication? Yep. Yes. Okay. So, um, I heard one idea, which is um, Virginia fixes the way she talks to Lisa. Yep. Would you all be okay if I used L and V from now on? Yep, that's fine. Okay. What other ideas do you have about communication? Um, Lisa should stop being defensive every time I say something to her. I'm not being defensive. I'm just, I'm just trying to function after being devastated by your son. So Lisa sounds like feeling devastated by some of Mikey's actions. And um, what are some ideas about getting the type of communication that you would like to hear? Maybe when she wants to say something to me, instead she could say something to Mikey about keeping his dick in his pants. I say things to Mikey about keeping his dick in his pants and I can say things to you about how you interact with him that could make things better or worse. Like I have, I, I feel like my, my advice is important. But it always feels like you're telling me that if I was this or this or this, then maybe he wouldn't be fucking around. That's not what I mean when I'm telling you those things. I'm not saying you can, like, you, you can't follow his dick around everywhere to make sure it's in his pants. That's not what I'm saying when I'm telling you things. What I am saying is there are ways that you handle him that also escalate things or don't make him always feel like you are a safe place for him to come and talk to. Just like, and I experienced the same thing with you. So, He's, she, he shouldn't respond to it by fucking other people 
but I understand how there can be breakdowns in communication on his end and on your end. So I tell him about shit he should do differently. And I feel like I have advice for you about how to handle him. So Virginia, it sounds like you're looking for some understanding about your desire to um, share your wisdom um, and also how you're able to hold at the same time um, responsibility toward him as well as um, advice toward Lisa. Is that right? That's right. Holding him accountable is also something I'm trying to do. And I have wisdom about him that I can give her. Okay. How about you just stop, but, stop talking to me about Mikey? How about that? I think that'll solve the problem. If you don't talk to me about Mikey, we can work on stuff about kids. We can work on stuff about the other things. Just don't talk to me about Mikey anymore. How about that? I'm absolutely not going to ever talk to you about my son anymore. I don't even know how that's <laughs> realistic. Wait, you said you are? You aren't. I, it's not realistic. I can't never, I can't agree to never talk to you about my son ever again. That's not, that's not realistic. I can agree. I can say that I will. Well, I don't have any other ideas then. I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know how we're going to solve this if you can't agree to that. Um, I just want to check in. Caroline, there was another idea. Virginia talks to Mikey about how he can do things differently. Wasn't another idea that I heard. And um, and Lisa, Lisa, I think I'm hearing like feeling exasperated and exhausted. Yeah. With how yeah. you're making this happening right now. Is that right? Yep. But that doesn't mean she gets to just shut the whole conversation down because I'm saying like, while I, I won't just say I'm never, it's not realistic for me to say I'm never going to talk to my my grandchildren's mother about their father ever again when their father is much like it's just okay but what i am saying i can say that i could because you're saying you think that every time i say something to you it's like i'm trying to get in your business with him or something so maybe i can think when I'm i want to say something to you about mikey I can think about how to say it first and then I can make sure that I say out loud to you, I'm not saying his behavior is your fault. And I can acknowledge to you the places he's an asshole and then tell you here are some ways you can deal with his assholishness. Cause that's really what I'm trying to do. I don't know why you need to talk to me about him at all. I think it's best just to. Because I'm watching you all blow up. And I just think things, even if you don't stay together, I think things can happen in a more peaceful way. But And you all just trigger each other's shit. Just from some of the stuff that y'all say to each other that, you know, because I've been in a marriage way longer I just understand some things about how you can navigate it that it's just not so explosive so often. Okay. And and Lisa, I think I was hearing earlier when you were talking about communication, like feeling um feeling feeling attacked and and judged often with communication. Is that right? And looking for Communication to happen in a way that's non-judgmental. Is that right? Yeah, and it's fine. I mean, that's so. Can, can we can we not make it advises and more like give that gives? I would give suggestions. She advises and she directs. She judges. That's not. That's not. But I, I'm not. I'm not saying that that's what I'm trying to do. I'm sorry that that's how it's that that's how I made you feel in the past. That's not what I was trying to do. So I'm trying to think of things that would make you see that I'm just saying, I know my fucking son. Like I know the kind of things that make it worse. And he'll even take something to use it as an opportunity to justify some fucked up behavior he's going to go do. Like, and I'm just saying there are ways to deal with, with, with that stuff differently. I don't think you understand, but okay. 
And and so Lisa, the, I think like looking for looking to be understood in terms of like how communication happens. Is that right? And feeling, uh, and and again like feeling feeling hurt um, by how communication has been happening so far. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's bad enough that I have you know. Um, you know, it's bad enough that I have a husband who was like apparently fucking acquaintances of mine before we even had kids, like in the first year of marriage. That's bad enough. But then to have his mother defending all that shit and telling me what I should do different. I'm not um, defending it. Yeah, I'm, that's not, the I'm really not. I'm not defending any of his bad behavior. I don't know how I can make that more clear to you. I'm not okay. defending his bad behavior. And if you think about it, so you found that stuff out not long into your marriage and you stayed, which I understand. And then he cheated on you and y'all, you got upset and you broke up for a minute and you got back together. Like I understand that these are things that happen in relationships. And I'm just saying that in it, if I have any suggestions about how to navigate it so that is not as explosive for you and for the children. I don't understand why I shouldn't say those things. I can do a better job at making sure when I'm saying, here's how to deal with my son's bullshit. Maybe I should use those words. Here's how to deal with Mikey's bullshit. And maybe I can also say things like, I'm not saying it's your fault. Like I'm willing to, to say those things if that's what you need to hear me say but I'm not defending his bad behavior. And, and you're human. You do do things that piss him off just like he does things that pisses you off. But I haven't fucked anybody else. Okay. So, um, Lisa, uh, we talked about with communication how you're looking for some respect and freedom from judgment. And at the same time, Virginia, it sounds like you're looking for the ability to share and um, share wisdom and be heard. Can um, both of you think about solutions to the topic of communication that could get you both um, that sense of respect and freedom from judgment, as well as the ability to share and be heard? Yeah. So since it's so important, she can't seem to function without giving me advice about how to engage with her son. Maybe what we could do is I could put um, earplugs in and so she could say all the things that she needs to say because that would help it get out of her and I wouldn't have to hear it. And then once it's out, I'll take the earplugs out and we can have a conversation about the kids. Because that I'm willing to work with that, that, that doesn't sound like a respectful idea at all. I don't just... know what to do about the fact that you can't control your mouth. I don't know why you can't not talk to me about Mikey. I don't know why you can't just say, I won't talk to you about Mikey. And we'll just talk about the kids. Why can't we just put that aside? Why do we when have to talk about Mikey? When your children are grown and they have children with somebody and you watch them and that person okay. explode all the time. Sure. When, I'll when you, you go through that, call me if I'm still you. alive and tell me how easy it is to watch you. it and not say a word. I'll call you. Let's write that down now. Let's write that down now. I'll call you and I'll tell you how it is that I am keeping my mouth shut about how they I should. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear it. I can't okay. wait to hear it. I can't okay. wait to hear it. All right. And, and I think I think something something else that that you don't understand that's just about how much I've experienced life at this point. I've gone through things that you have yet to even experience. So for instance, when I'm saying, and I, when I'm saying that men are gonna be men, I don't mean that like, so we should just let them do whatever the fuck they want. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. Men are the weaker sex. Okay. They use shit. So if if we are if 
we are not being, if, if all we're doing is criticizing and not listening and making them feel unsupported, whereas when we feel that way, we don't deal with it by going and fucking other people, they have not been socialized to learn how to really use their words and talk about it when they feel that way until they get caught cheating and then they come back and say, well, it's because you weren't making me feel like a man or some shit. And I, so you don't know. I don't, you know, here's the stuff I don't tell you. I was sucking his dick every night really good and worshiping the ground he walked on and he still went out and fucked somebody else. So there's nothing else to say about it. I'm making, I, I know how to make a man. Sucking his good. dick good is suck his, again, I'm not saying that it's your fault. So you I'm not, you I'm are. not, that's not what I'm, that's, I'm not saying that it's your fault. I am saying that in a man's brain a lot of times, yes, you can be sucking his dick good, but he will take something small, something else that you did small that irritated him or pissed him off or made him feel unsupported. And he will go, right. oh, well, G well, Gina wouldn't treat me that way and use that as an excuse. And I'm not saying that he should use that to go and fuck somebody. What I am saying is when y'all have those conversations and when things blow up, I listen to, I hear the shit that y'all are saying to each other and I just have advice about how it could go just not okay. as explosive for you. That's all I'm saying. Give me the advice with my earplugs in. You can write the advice down. How about you write the advice down and then I'll give it to my children when I can't control myself when they're, um, yeah, 20, 15 years from now when my kids are grown and I can't control myself, I'll have it already written down because you'll write it down for me now and I'll just hand it to them. How about that? Okay, how about you don't argue with Mikey in front of the kids? Because I could, I probably could keep my mouth closed a lot more if I didn't know and see how much these verbal explosions are impacting the kids. You want me to keep my mouth shut, but you want to be zapping out which you have a right to zap out but in front of the kids is not cool so but i thought that maybe you know it that's the way shit happens so i had some advice about it but fine i won't say shit if i know that oh the kids won't hear it you and mikey can rip each other to shreds if that's what y'all want to do verbally but don't do it in front of the kids I'll think about it. And I, I wanted to check in, um, Lisa, earlier, I think I was hearing you saying that you felt betrayed and hurt about how things were happening in the, in the, in the marriage and looking for, looking for some space for healing when it comes to communication. Is that right? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, like yeah, that's actually yeah. Mm -hmm. And and um, so what ideas do the two of you have that would allow for space for healing when it comes to communication? Well, while 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 her and the kids are at my house, if I hear that she's just had an argument with Mikey on the phone or something, um, I can like maybe come and ask her, is she okay? You know, or does she need a hug? Or, you know, and maybe even say to her, like, do you just, you want to vent? I won't say anything. I'll just listen. I won't give any response or any advice, but do you just need to scream and vent? right now we can go outside away from the kids um or i can just come and ask her if she needs time by herself and i'll take the kids to another part of the house while she has time to process her emotions about whatever just happened on the phone with him yeah i mean if you want to take the kids before i make a phone call to him that that might be helpful you know Oh yeah, you could come and tell me before you're about to get on the phone with him and I can just take, that would be good too. Cause then even afterwards you could still have how, how, however much time you need. And then they don't have to hear. 
Yeah. Okay, so from those I heard, um, Virginia asked Lisa if she's okay or if she needs a hug. Virginia just listens to Lisa. Virginia asks Lisa if she needs to scream and vent. Virginia asks Lisa if she needs her to take the kids. Virginia takes the kids before Lisa makes a phone call to Mikey. Um, there was a lot in there, so I just want to make sure if there were any ideas in there that I missed. Um. So yeah, I think it's important. So what I'm saying on this, uh, V just listens to L. Like, so she's been, I think it's important. What I'm saying is that I'll tell her that I'm just gonna listen and not give advice. And I think that's important because I feel like I've been saying things that she hears as criticism or blame. And I don't mean it that way. So I've realized I must need to like, say my whole intention so when I was saying that idea I wasn't just saying I would come in and start listening I'm saying I'll come in and say hey do you need to talk I'll just listen I won't give advice and Virginia and you know her. I, I appreciate that and thank you I mean I, I just I got to be honest like you're not the person I want to talk to about Mikey I mean, like, no offense, and I, I mean, I'm hearing, like, you, I hear you say you want to be helpful. Okay, I, I don't feel it that way, so I, you're not the one I'm going to come to. I mean, that's fine. But if you want to take the kids so I can talk to Mikey, like, your points, well, I got it, your, your point about, like, I shouldn't argue with Mikey in front of the kids, I'm sure that that's true. I'm sure that's true. It's been hard to do with, like, we're all in the same space. But that's a good idea. But I'm not gonna come. You're not the one. I just. I maybe. think you're gonna have. I think you're gonna have moments in your life, especially while we're stuck in the house together. I think you're gonna have moments where you are losing your shit after hanging up with him, and you're just gonna need a place to dump it. And I'm saying to you, I might not be the person you want to do that with. I'm just leaving the door open so that you know, if you ever have that moment, not okay. a, I'll listen, I won't say anything, and I won't bring it up later. I won't bring up anything you said in a later conversation and give you advice about it later. I'll literally just be a place that can just listen while you cry and scream, and I'll just give you a hug and let you know that you'll, you know, you can make it through, you'll be okay, but I won't give you any advice about what to do, and I won't bring it up later. And you can think well, you'll you never need that, okay. but you might. Or, or if you want to hang on to my kids for a couple more minutes, I can call my real friends, too. <laughs> um... Your amount of shadiness and pettiness and hurtful shit that you say out of your mouth is just like, it's amazing. Like here I am. I don't, I don't know if it's that you don't understand family. I don't know if it's that you don't understand how this pandemic and us having to be in the house together is a great opportunity for us to strengthen our relationship and actually get to know each other as women. But like in the middle of me saying what I'm saying to you and you, or I'll call my real friends. Like, I'm not saying you don't fucking have real friends. I mean, if you're a bitch to everybody like this, I don't know how you have real friends, but okay. Um, and Virginia, I think I'm hearing that you're feeling, feeling insulted about how communication is happening right now. Is that correct? Yeah, really hurt. Like not even insulted, cause I don't. But it's it's like it's hurt. Like I'm really opening up right now to understand that, you know, I've made her feel like I was just all on her. And I know I I know how you feel when you are having an argument with somebody you love who's been lying and cheating on you. 
and we are women in the house, stuck in the house together. And I'm saying if she ever has a moment, she get, hangs up the phone and it's just like, oh, sometimes in that moment, you don't think to pick up a phone and call somebody else. But I'm right there in the freaking house and I'm a woman who's gone through shit as well. And I could be a resource that just listens and okay. hugs and not brings it, you know, and... Okay. All right. And I'll, I'll, y'all also, I'll show you the photos I found on his phone and the text messages. I'll show you all of it. How about that? If that's what you need to then do, you get to know I'm, really who your son is. Mm -hmm. I don't need to understand every place my son's dick goes. I understand that he's a hoe. That's not something that I'm unaware of. I know he was a hoe before he married you, as you pointed out. Right. I don't think that any of us are shocked that Mikey is a hoe. Okay. So I don't need to see those things. If you and your venting and processing need to show me those things, I'm that's fine. I'll I can see all of it. And and um and Lisa, it sounds like um looking for looking for people to talk to that have a full understanding of what's going on, right? Well, you know, yeah, not even a full understanding. I'm just, um, like I said before, I've been feeling, um, what's the word, judged? Like, and I, I don't know why I keep thinking, I need to just, I need to just let go. I, I keep thinking that maybe if Virginia heard enough, saw enough, you know, she would, she would stop blaming me um or giving me advice or tips marriage tips like that's not helpful for me um and you know frankly i'm i'm done with the relationship so i don't know why i keep even bothering um i think that um you know she's she makes a good point we shouldn't fight in front of the kids like that's um i'm in with that so if she wants to help me so that we're not fighting in front of the kids that's great like while we're all stuck here together and then as soon as we get through this, I'm going to start going through the divorce process. And so, um, but I don't want, you know, like, and I, and I can tell, I'm going to tell you this right now, Virginia, when we go through the divorce process, I don't mean to keep the kids from Mikey and I'm definitely not going to keep the kids from you. You're still going to get to see the kids like that's Well, that's like we can even write that stuff down now or later or whenever, I just don't want to hear from you about how I should stay in this marriage because it is too freaking painful. And I, um, so I, that's fair. I mean, I, I get that and I can, I can absolutely not give you because I guess there is a difference between me giving you marriage tips and me saying, Hey, I know this person, here's some advice, you know, here's some suggestions about how to, navigate this person right you know like that that's different i think and so i can not give you marriage tips um and not say anything about what you should do about like whether you stay with mikey or not i can stop saying those kinds of things and um Earlier, Virginia, I think you 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 talked about feeling misunderstood and mistrusted, and looking for communication to happen in a way that um, that your intentions and your your um, perspectives are understood. Is that right? Yes. And Lisa, I think I, I was hearing from you that around communication, um, uh, you were feeling badgered. Is that right? And looking for some ideas around communication that would um, get you the um, get you the uh, I, I think it was like maybe like peacefulness that you were looking for or peaceful environment. Yeah. So, what ideas do the two of you have around communication that would get both the the peaceful environment and the understanding? So I think that like when I'm just thinking about it and listening to what y'all are saying right now, I feel like, like even when she said like I walked past and I was mumbling, like 
I probably did do that. And then I was angry that she didn't tell me how she felt about it. But my, and mumbling, I wasn't saying out loud to her what I thought either. And so maybe um, if I'm seeing something happen with the kids and what she's doing with the kids, I can ask questions about it instead of mumbling. So I won't mumble anything anymore. Um, I'll come to her and I'll ask questions about things that I see happening with the kids. And then um, could well, maybe that make her feel criticized, huh? Sorry. I was, I was just gonna say, I think if we could, I don't mind talking about the kids, especially when we're in your house and what we're gonna do and what we're gonna expect for the kids and coming up with a plan and how you're gonna be part of, if you wanna be part of their school or their phys ed or whatever part you wanna do. Um, I th and I think that if we agree not to talk about Mikey, what it would mean is we could talk about even the kids. Cause every time we wanna, every time I wanna talk to you about um, the fact that I wanna raise these kids with discipline, chores, schedules, like you hear that as a criticism of how you raised Mikey and you know, okay, sometimes it's snarky, but I, that's how I want to raise my kids, regardless of whether I think you did a good or a bad job with Mikey, regardless of what I think is your fault or not your fault. So if we can agree that we could talk about my kids, but we're not going to talk about Mikey, then maybe that would help. So I can, I absolutely think we can talk about, while we're talking about the kids, I won't bring up Mikey. And, and I think, you know, I don't, and you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, um, I could probably do a better job of not, I won't, I won't say anything about how you raise Mikey. Thank you. So I'm going to stop right now. This is me breaking the fourth, bringing down the fourth wall again. So this is stage A of the brainstorming process where we will use all the values and feelings that they expressed in, in stage, in step two, um, information gathering. And we'll use those feelings and values that we understood around those topic, around each topic to support them in coming up with more and more collaborative ideas. So, um, Caroline would and I would, in a in a real mediation, stay in this stage of the brainstorming process um, until we have exhausted all the values that we had collected around the topic of communication. And um, to maximize your viewing pleasure, we are not going to stay in stage A. We are going to shift into stage B, which is the picking and um, picking part of the uh, brainstorming process. Um, so we'll read through the whole list of the ideas that they, that they have come up with and, um, and then ask them which ones they feel like they can agree to. And then we'll identify, we'll check the ones that they've agreed to, and then we'll um, check the ones that may work with some, uh, that have some potential, okay? All right, anything else, um, Lorg, Erica, Caroline, that you would say about this before I re- um, re-erect the um the fourth wall yeah that's great thank you okay all right fourth wall rebuilt all right um all right at this point in the process we are going to move into this stage b of the brainstorming process and we will read the ideas that were listed and then check in to see which ones could work with some um tweaking and adjusting and before I do that, I need to make this just a wee bit bigger. I guess I could put on my glasses. All right, thank you. Um, so under communication, we have Virginia fixes the way she talks to Lisa. Lisa stops being defensive. Lisa stops being, 
Uh, Lisa stops being defensive. Virginia says something to Mikey about keeping his dick in his pants when he wants to say something to Lisa. Virginia says things to Lisa about how her interactions with Mikey could make things worse. Virginia stops talking to Lisa about Mikey anymore. Um, Virginia, Virginia talks to Mikey about how he can do things differently. Virginia thinks first about how to say things to Lisa about Mikey. Virginia acknowledges places that Mikey is an asshole. Virginia advises Lisa on how to deal with Mikey's assholishness. Um, it says I'm controlling the screen, Caroline, but I'm not feeling in control right now. Um, can you can you scroll down again? Scroll down. I can see your cursor, and I can see you highlighting. Okay. Um, Virginia does a better job saying, "Here's how to deal with." Mikey's bullshit. Um, yeah. Virginia does not defend Mikey's bad behavior. Lisa puts earplugs in so that Virginia can say everything she wants to say. Then she will take earplugs out to talk about the kids. And I just want to put an L there. Um, Virginia just talks about the children. Lisa calls Virginia when her kids when her when her kids are older and she is keeping her mouth shut. Virginia writes her advice down. Um, Lisa writes the advice writes the advice from Virginia down and gives them to her children when they are older. Lisa avoids arguing with Mikey in front of the children. Lisa asks Virginia asks Lisa if she is okay or if she needs a hug. Virginia just listens to Lisa. Virginia asks Lisa if she needs to scream and vent. Virginia asks Lisa if she needs her to take the kids. Virginia takes the kids before Lisa makes a phone call to Mikey. Virginia tells Lisa she will she will just listen without giving advice before starting the conversation. Virginia leaves the door open that Lisa can vent to her when she is upset with Mikey. Virginia will be a place Lisa can vent. Virginia holds on to children so that Lisa can call her friends. Virginia just listens and hugs. Lisa shows Virginia photos from Mikey's phone. Virginia sees photos of Mikey if Lisa needs her to. Virginia stops blaming Lisa or giving marriage tips. Lisa starts going through divorce process. Lisa does not keep kids from Mikey or Virginia following divorce. Virginia does not say to Lisa why she should stay in the marriage. Virginia asks questions about things she sees happening with the kids rather than mumbling about it. Lisa and Virginia talk about expectations with the kids. Lisa and Virginia talk about the ki talk about kids but not Mikey. Virginia does not Virginia does not bring up Mikey while Lisa and Virginia are talking about the kids. I think you skipped one about phys ed. Um, my apologies. On that last page. Yeah, that one with the Yeah, okay, curses. I see. Lisa and Virginia talk about how Virginia can be involved with their schooling and phys ed. Um, Lisa does not say anything to Virginia about how she raised Mikey. And I think that's it. So, um, Caroline, can I get your help? I'm, um, getting it back to multi-screen. It seems like some of the smaller things my cursor is not connecting with. Um, like multiple pages like this? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, that's it. Awesome. So which of these ideas do you feel like um, you could come to easy, quick agreement on? 
And and uh, let me say the ideas that you both easily agree to, I am going to highlight in green. And those ideas that one of you likes or or you either of you thinks could work with some uh, a tweaking and adjusting, I will highlight those in yellow. Well, I mean, like I said, I can I can not talk to the kids. Um, sorry, not talk to Mikey when the kids are around. That's, I mean, not be on the phone with him when the kids are around, because it always turns into a fight. So, you know, after they say, hi, daddy, whatever, whatever, then she can take them. That's on there somewhere. I'm sorry, I don't know where. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Avoids arguing. Yeah. Just basically, it's but always an argument. But you're saying in general now, not just with arguing, you're saying anytime you get on the phone with him, you'll have them say hi and everything. And then after that, you want me to come in. You'll tell me to come in and get him. I think that's best because, you know, I never call him like thinking, okay, now I'm going to argue with him. I call him because we're going to have a conversation and it always ends in an argument. So we'll call him, FaceTime, whatever. Kids say, hi, daddy. They tell him everything. And then you take him. I think that's on there somewhere. You taking them, and then, um, and then you know, if some freaking miracle happens and we have a civil conversation, that's fine. But if what probably always happens is we fight, then they won't be there to hear it. So okay, and I want to make sure, Virginia, uh, were these two ideas were these ideas you felt comfortable? Um, yeah, but I don't think that second one is what she's saying. She's not saying she's gonna, she wants me to take him before she makes a phone call to him. I don't think we have this thing that she's saying about they say <laughs> hi to him first and then she tells me to come in and get him. She's not saying. That sounds like a new idea. It's it's basically, I mean, yeah, it's, it's oh, before I that. start talking to him instead of before I make a phone call. Because the kids talk to him. We talk to him every day, right? You know, the kids, right. yeah, we talk to him every day. The kids talk to him and then I fight with him and then the kids are there. And then she comes in and yells at me for fighting with him in front of the kids. And then we get in a fight. That's basically what happens now. So now what we'll do is the kids will say hi. She'll take the kids. Then I'll talk to Mikey. And, you know, I hope someday we don't fight, but right now it's a fight. So then they won't be around. Yeah, I agree to that. Both of those, not arguing and them saying hi and then me coming and taking them. Okay, so both of these work for you? Yeah. All right. Um. I'm I'm gonna request a, a quick break. I need to run and grab glasses. I'm kind of new to glasses, so I'm just gonna pause right here. I thought I was. Carolyn, can you see if you can um, pause the recording up at the top left? Um. All right. Thank you. We are back. All right. So, um. All right, so do, do is this this new idea does that capture the what you were saying, Lisa and Virginia? What are your thoughts about that? We we do we have agreement on that one? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think that's good. All right, what else do you feel like you can um, quickly agree to? I won't say anything to her about why she should stay in the marriage. Well, I mean. Yeah, but also, it's not just about why I should say anything. It's like just generally when you say things about, um, um, and I won't give marriage tips. Okay. Okay. 
Caroline, I'm, I apologize. I'm not able to highlight it all right now, so. Got it. Okay, and there was another one about marriage tips, I think. Mm -hmm. The agreement from both of you on that one. So that also, that said, um, Virginia stops blaming Lisa or giving marriage tips. Is that something you both agree on? Well, no, because I never, I was never blaming her. And so I wasn't saying I would stop blaming her. I, I am saying I'll stop giving marriage tips. Well, see, I feel like you were blaming me. And so I do want that one too. So I won't blame you, but I'm not going to say I'll stop blaming you because that's not what I was doing. I can say that I won't blame you. Well, I won't blame you and I won't give you marriage tips and I won't tell you you should stay in a marriage. Okay. All right. That's good. Virginia that avoids help. blaming Lisa and giving marriage tips. Does that capture it better? Yes. Is that acceptable to you, Virginia? Yes. Okay. So, um, um, I think. Oh, I won't bring up Mikey while we are talking about the kids. Okay, Lisa, what are your thoughts about this one? Well, you... yeah, except that, um, um, I mean, I feel like you do it in more sort of like subtle ways. You know, like if they, like we're talking about the kids and then like, I think sometimes you don't even know you're doing it. So like, I, I think that's good, but I think there's more to it than that. Like the way that you bring them up and, um, yeah. Cause it's, I feel like you're right. Cause I feel like you are being petty and shady and saying you're throwing in stuff about how, uh, how I raised him right. and, and, and how you want to raise the like, kids. And you're saying things like, you know, if they had a father around, blah, 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 you know, like he was ever around, you know? So, I mean, I, I think it's a good idea. I just, I just think you have to work. Yeah. We, we got to figure out what are those things. Cause I don't even, you're right. I, I feel like I'm just responding to your pettiness and you feel like we, that I'm saying, so I, yeah, I guess we got to figure that one out. So like wanting to um, navigate the details so that there aren't um, intentional nor unintentional uh, digs or advice given, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think we don't okay. agree right now about how this ever even happens. Okay, how so let's- him up even comes up. Okay, so let's, let's um, put that one in yellow right for right now, and then we can come back and see how that idea can be adjusted in order to get the, um, to get to have that idea happen in its purest form is is that what we're looking okay. for? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. What else? Um. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna keep you. I mean, you already know. Like, I'm not gonna keep you kids. The kids. For, well, maybe you away know, from me. Away from you and Mikey. It's good. I would like to, I didn't think about that. I mean, maybe in the back of my mind because of how often you just shut them all in the room. It does make, I guess I did worry. So it's nice to hear out loud that after all of this is over, you won't keep them away from me. So is that when you'd like to put in your agreement? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'll, um, Uh, 
it was something in here about I would talk to Mikey about how he could do things differently. I mean, you know, obviously you can tell Mikey anything you want. At this point, I feel like it's really, it's a moot point. You know, he can, um, I mean, okay. that's your business with him. You know, like I. Yeah, so we don't need to put that here. That, that's fine. Yeah. Um, was there one in here I said where I was saying something that I'll say something directly to you? Like, a, because cause as you said, I was mumbling. Oh, that I'll ask questions about things, Lisa, that I, that I see happening with the kids rather than mumbling about it. I can do that. Yeah, but not in front of the kids. I mean, sometimes in front of the kids, but not always in front. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's some things that I don't need you, like, questioning my authority in front of the kids. Other times, like, if it's just a question. Or something I'm interested in you know, that like, I see them doing. Hmm? Right. So if it's something I'm just, like, interested in that I see them doing, that's okay to ask a question. So maybe I'll, before I ask a question, um... I'll check to see if it's a question I should ask you in front of the kids or away from the kids before I ask it. Well, I mean, when we talk about um, expectations with the kids, um, maybe that's it. You know, like, I mean, if, I mean, sometimes when you're mumbling, I think you're just wondering, like, are they watching Netflix? Are they doing like a classroom thing? Whatever, you could ask that in front of them but sometimes it seems like you're suggesting like oh i shouldn't be making them fold the laundry or something like I, if you have a want to have a conversation with me about when kids shouldn't shouldn't fold the laundry that should not happen in front of the kids okay so yeah so i'm saying i'll check in with myself oh, you know okay. like i'll think about first like is this something i should ask her in front of the kids or got it, like got not it. the kind of thing i should ask her in front of the kids Okay, so the two together, Virginia asked questions about things she sees happening with the kids away from the kids rather than mumbling about it. Ask Lisa. Um, Virginia thinks first about whether a question can be asked in front of the kids. So I agree to that last one. And then the very... Yeah, I agree to that last one. And then the very first one that started this conversation is that, because my point is, instead of mumbling, I'll talk directly to her and I just ask her a question. But I'll think first before I ask the question. So I, I agree to that last one. And the one V asked questions about things she sees happening rather than mumbling. Okay. Um, Am I making Lisa, sense? Lisa, do you agree with the very last one so far? Yeah. Mm hmm and what about this one? You you mentioned you would like that to happen away from the kids. Well, that's what I was saying where, um... She was saying some things away from the kids, some things are okay in front of the kids. Right. right. So, so I think if I think about it first... Yeah, that's fine. That'll take yeah. care of that, but, but then I'll just... Hey, I won't mumble. I'll just ask her things. Directly. Okay, I understand now. Thank you for clarifying. So, um, Lisa, you're okay with the original phrasing? Yeah. As long as there's thinking about it first. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Great. Um, what are are there other what other? I items? also um. I would. I can um. Oh. Okay. So, am are we? Okay. So I'll. I I think I I still want to be an open door. Oh. Is there any okay. thoughts on that idea, Lisa? Sorry, being an open door. Yes. 
leaving the door open, that I'll leave the door open. I mean, thank you. I probably am not going to take you up she on it. She might not use it, but. Okay. So again, I'm uh, pulling down the, um, the fourth wall. And so we would keep checking in with them um, and making space for them to find um, ideas that they both agree to. If they're any, at any point, you know, they come to an idea and there's questions on whether or not that idea will work. One person likes it, one person's not sure or is adamant that it won't. We just quickly yellow it and then move, and then ask again, what are some ideas that you both feel like you can um, agree to? So the point of that is to make sure we're not losing momentum on things that they, that they can agree to. So at this point, we're gonna go back, we're gonna go into stage C and we'll focus on uh, demonstrating what can be done with ideas that they that may have potential. So you'll recall that when we were prepping, um, we uh, Caroline and I agreed that um, I would be kind of handling stage B, um, the selecting, and then technology thwarted that plan. And so um, Caroline has has been very graciously stuck with um, moving on uh, um, on highlighting that, that those things. But we're gonna move on to stage B and we're just gonna demonstrate with one of the ideas um, how we would do the adjusting on that. Um, so I usually go kind of like in the order that, they, um, that they're written. And so I'll check in with that first one, okay? Um, so fourth wall is back up. So um, we're moving on to stage C right now, and we want to check in on some of these ideas that uh, were identified that may work with some tweaking and adjusting. And so uh, the first one we have highlighted is Virginia stops blaming uh, Lisa or giving marriage tips. So what are, um, who, who was interested in that idea? Which one? Huh? Was that you, Lisa? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, I feel like we've sort of got it over there with the void. Yeah, we did. We did. Okay. Okay. So feel like that one's worked out. Okay. So to yeah. the next one then. Um, so Virginia does not bring up Mikey while Lisa and Virginia are talking about the kids. Um, this was Kristen. the one that I was saying. Like, I'm sorry. No, no, I would like to hear from you, Lisa. I was just saying that, um, that um, I think she doesn't know that, um, like, because we're talking about the kids, and then she'll say things like, well, when I was raising Mike and such and such, and then it sort of slips into other stuff, and then, or, sh or she'll say, like, something about their father or whatever. Like, I think that she... Um, Cause she, I, you were saying like, you could agree to that. And I'm just saying, I think you have to be like extra careful. Cause I don't think you know how much you do that. Um, I, I just don't think. So I won't say things like, I'm gonna bring up also petty shit that you say in a minute that sometimes triggers me to say things, but I'll first say, I won't say things like, well, if they had a father around, right you're talking about that kind of stuff some right so i won't say stuff like that and i won't bring up how i raised mikey while we're talking about how you raise the kids okay fair enough and i would like for you to not say things about like you know because i want them to be different than they how their father is like how their father was raised or like i feel like you say things that are like taking digs at maybe i didn't raise him right and that's why he is an asshole. I won't say those things. So, I don't need to say those things out loud. <laughs> out loud. Could you repeat that idea? It seemed like there was a new idea in there. I don't think I had it. So, um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It was that um, it was that Virginia won't mention. It was that I won't mention anything about how Virginia raised Mikey, and Virginia won't mention anything about if the kid's father was around. 
when we're discussing the children and what they should or shouldn't be doing. So these two ideas cover what you just said. Lisa Voigt's mentioning anything about how Virginia raised Mikey. And so I think that, so I was given specific, I was given things because she was saying it wasn't just like me not bringing them up. I don't mention specific thing. Like there's certain things that I say. And so I was saying, that I'll avoid saying if they had a father around and I'll avoid saying um, how I raised Mikey. And things about how about you raised children. Mikey? Yeah, and how I raised Mikey, yeah. All right. Yep, that's it. Okay, so you got it, Caroline. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you both agree on this one? Absolutely. Yeah, both of those. I agree to the other one too. Okay. Lisa, yeah. do you agree to this one here? Yes. All right, so uh, this is me with the fourth wall brought back down again. So we would keep checking in to make sure that we understand and any details that they need to make that idea work. And so that idea actually became several other ideas that they were able to pick. So now we're gonna demonstrate with one of these ideas. We can do it from the, um, oh yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, getting details on the idea that they did get, have consensus on. So um, I'm putting back up the fourth wall. Um, so let's, let's work on the move into stage D, which is getting details on these ideas. So the first one that you have, um, Lisa avoids arguing with Mikey in front of the children. What details do you need to make that idea work? Well, I mean, I think there's two things, right? So the biggest one is like while we're stuck in right now, which feels like it's going to be forever, but I know there'll be an end to it. So like right now, I think the plan that we have of basically, I'm not going to be talking to Mikey with the kids around. And that way, I think that's somewhere else on here. And that way, if, when, because it always becomes an argument, mm -hmm. um, If I'm just not talking to them, then um, I won't be arguing. So that's like the biggest thing for now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, you know later there's going to be a whole bunch more stuff. You know, I'm not going to move back in with Mikey when this is all over. I need to to find another place. So we're going to have to work out like a schedule and all those kinds of things. Um, but because we're not going to be living together, you know, we won't be fighting in front of the kids. Okay, so it sounds like some of these other ideas kind of capture the details for you around that. For yeah, idea is that right? Okay. Yeah, but I think also though, just while she's still here, so we have the the kids will say hi, and then. Um, so she has to, that I'll come and take the kids. So I guess like the detail is she has to come and tell me when to come get the kids and then also tell me when she's ready for me to, you know, for the, yeah. not that I wouldn't still be around them, right? But when. Well, I mean, the house ready. is not that big, but yeah, I'll come let you know when I'm, uh, 
when she's ready to have the kids around her again. Yeah, after I breathed and talked to a friend and all that. Right. Kind of thing. right. Okay. All right. So the details, um, Lisa does not talk to Mikey with the kids around. Lisa tells um, Virginia when she needs to, needs Virginia to come and take the kids for a phone call with Mikey. And Lisa tells Virginia when she's finished with talking to Mikey and a friend and can take the kids back. Um, and so um, what, are, what are your thoughts about those ideas? Yeah, that's, that, that, that sort of covers all the pieces that go with yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So we'll highlight that and we can put those together in the agreement if you want. Okay. And um, I just, I wanted to, I heard you say, um, Lisa, since I won't be talking to Mikey with the kids around, which is a, a pretty different idea than this one up here about saying hi to Mikey first and then um, V takes the kids. And um, so I wanted to know if this, if this framing of the idea was something you wanted in the agreement. No, I meant, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to the be there thing. while the kids are saying, like, the kids are saying um, whatever they, I mean, there's not that much to catch them up on, honestly. Like, you know, they had a math class online, whatever. They cooked cookies with Virginia, but whatever. Yeah, I'll be there when that happens. But in terms of like me having a conversation, that's not going to happen. So, so like the kids will say hi, I'll get Virginia, she'll take the kids and then I'll have my conversation with Mikey. Okay. Does, do you feel that this already covers it or that you need the new, the broader frame on that as well? No, I mean, all that together works. The ones that are already selected or this one too? Which one are you pointing to? I'm sorry. I'm pointing to this one, um, which is much broader than anything you had said before. Um, Lisa does not talk to Mikey with the kids around. Yeah. Do you feel like the other ones you've already agreed to already cover what you need to cover yeah. under that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. And I'm going to end the scene right here. So mediators, we would do this level of capturing detail for each one of the ideas that they have gotten consensus about. And we're not forcing our participants to come up with this level of detail. We're just making space for them to do that. All right. To the to the extent that it was that is helpful for them. Um all right. So can I get my role play participants to um de-roll? <laughs> You're you are not Lisa and Virginia, you are and if you change your names on there. I am Erica. Okay. And can you change your names back? All right. I'm not Lisa. I'm Lorig. <laughs> and one difference is. Mm. One difference is. I have two children instead of three. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but you are that patty. <laughs> <laughs> it comes so naturally. You have to imagine that I might be. <laughs> um. So also, I would never, here's another difference. I would never clean the floor with a dish towel. <laughs> Got great stories about I that. might though, that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anything, um, other learnings that I've, I've, I've been talking a lot on, the, on this recording, other uh, learnings that you want to highlight, um, skills that we demonstrated that you want to make sure um, folks watching these video, this, um, this recording, uh, pay attention to? Um, I'm not sure at what point it happened, but I've, although we didn't do a full step two, um, mm -hmm. you know, full of any of the stages, I mm -hmm. felt at some point I shifted from being really like married to my position and how mm -hmm. I felt about her to I realized like, oh, she really thinks that I think my son is right for cheating on her. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, and what am I doing to make her think that? And it was feelings I was hearing you all reflect to her, like how she felt when I said things to her that made me go, is that like how she badgered, I think was one that I was like, what? And so it didn't make me feel like you were saying I was badgering her, but like, I think keep hearing feelings that she felt, 
I was like, okay, wait a minute. What can I do so she won't feel like that? Because that's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And and I think, so part of that for from the mediator perspective is we totally got, you know, like you feeling judged and that, that the character Lisa was feeling judged and criticized. And the temptation is, all right, I got that. And I'll check in with that reflection from time to time. But the the, the challenge for us was to go deeper with the understanding not yeah. for like analyzing her, but like really paying attention to what she's saying and, and go for, it's not just, I feel judged, but I feel badgered. I feel betrayed. I feel hurt. I'm looking for yeah. healing, you know, and like, you know. Oh, that was a good one. The looking for healing made me think about, well, wait a minute, what can I do to help her heal when she gets mm-hmm. off the phone? And as women, we go through shit. Like right, that really right. was, that triggered those ideas, yeah. Yeah, that's that's because we're good, Carolyn and I. You <laughs> are good. I think that um, you should be certified you. mediators. I think some of the pieces that I could hear differently um, through the process too. I was still I because I similarly, Eric. I found myself shifting in character, um, and I think that it got really clear to me that um, the. And I'm trying to figure out what some of the reflections were that were helpful with it. But the piece that got clear to me was this thing about, um, like, that really I had shut the children away from you, like, in trying to, like, build some walls for myself um, and protections for myself against what felt like judgments, um, that I had sort of shut the children away as well. And so the, the biggest shift that was happening for me was, like, how can I figure out how to give you really solid access to an engagement with the children while we were here, um, regardless of whatever you were gonna feel about your your son and what you were gonna say to me ab- about him. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out where some of the, uh, where some of those, sh- I feel like that was the most significant shift that started to happen for me. Um, and I'm trying to think of where that that was happening, but I think it was sort of, a combination of the um, the feeling reflections around you and the kids that went to you, and then it was the um, you this piece that I think is always the value of the process, which is sort of simultaneously acknowledging the intensity of the feelings and then the components that are about problem solving. And so the reflections about children's activities, um, the reflections about communication, the stuff that, that was sort of the more concrete, specific things that we could work on. And so the combination of that, I think, got me to a place of like, okay, this could be really helpful. We could figure out how grandma engages with children um, and maybe build, and the boundaries, I think the term boundaries kind of gave me the sense like we could have these boundaries around what you say or don't say about Mikey and still have this stuff about the kids where you engage yeah. with them. It doesn't have to be just shut the door completely for everything. Yeah. Um, so I, I do want to highlight, you know, like the time frames that we use for these steps are not etched in stone. And like we said, we really could have used more time in each one of those steps. Um, and I cannot highlight the co-mediation process enough. You having your co-mediator and, and, and while it's, it's very important that we make a plan about how we're going to do stuff, it's equally as important that we be flexible because life happens. And, um, and you know, just really appreciate Caroline being willing to pick up what I, like, logistically was not able to pick up and us still figuring out how we're going to work together to make sure that these people feel heard. Um, also, uh, I think there's this misconception because we're really committed to not cutting off participants. So you see this kind of dance that uh, Caroline and I are doing with the participants and that we're- Casey, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted to make sure you knew that we were not recording because it sounds like you're talking to the audience now. It it, it still says recording on my screen. Oh, mine says recording paused. Oh. Huh, mine says recording. Mine says recording too. Let's see. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's showing recording on mine too. Hey, is it going to screw everything up if I pull off now? Like, can you? Yeah, no, off? no, no. We we um. That's what she said. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, 
Now we can't get paid for this. Now we <laughs> it's demonetized. It's demonetized. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. So hopefully this is still recording. But um, I want to say that um, with we we prioritize an inclusive model. Participants being able to talk. We do want to get in with reflections and open-ended questions, but not at the expense of them talking. So you'll see us doing this kind of back and forth dance where we, uh, if we were about to jump in and we see the participant is talking, then we pull back out, give them space to talk, and then we'll come back in with a reflection, either the reflection we were going to say or a new reflection based off of what they just added. Okay, so it's not that we do not reflect or we don't get in and talk, it's that we prioritize participants being able to speak to each other. Right. Um, Caroline, Erica, what else would you add? I think it's, I mean, it, it's worth kind of repeating. Mm -hmm. I said it a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but I'm never, uh, it always amazes me how even when we're doing these kind of demos and so we don't have time to like literally go through fully the steps, that the power still of what happens is still gets shown. Um, and I just want to put up a warning flag that mediators don't use this as a reason or an example to then rush the process. Like, oh, when they do the demo and they don't get to go through all the steps, it still turns out good. People still get agreements. So remembering that the process is not like the goal is not necessarily all about let's get to an agreement. And mm -hmm. also, um, while mediators, these mediators were really good at unpacking things um, and running the process, still as a participant, there were things that I could tell I would have still, I still wanted to bitch about and vent about that I didn't for training purposes, but I knew that stuff was still there. Realistically, I still would have been doing that stuff because we didn't have a full step two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, absolutely. While you still saw the, yeah. Right, while you still saw the power of doing this process yeah. shortened, please know that participants were purposely not saying and doing things that we really did feel because there was not a full a full step two and yeah. and vice versa like i think some of the anger that was in step four if it were a real mediation where there had been a longer step two there mm -hmm. wouldn't have been quite as much um sniping during step four if it That's were a real mediation that's a good point too because there were a lot of things like the stuff about we're women and men are stupid i really would have said in step two right exactly yeah all right um how about we do um caroline and i do some um some feedback on the recording and then we can finish up off recording okay so you don't need me anymore uh no unless you we always need you Let's just, I mean. uh, some things you want to uh, check in with in the feedback. So it, in, a, in a real mediation, a participant wouldn't wouldn't participate in feedback. But um, yeah, I can I can leave. You got it. Being Virginia. All right. Bye. Thank you, Erica. Bye. Thank you, Erica. All right. Um, how about we do uh, two and two, Carol? All right, sounds good. Versus two deltas, two pluses, two deltas. Again, in real mediation, we just get, we don't number how many we're going to do, but we we want to be respectful of your time. Um, and thank you again for watching this uh, recording. Um, you want to start, Tracy? Sure. Um, some pluses for myself. Um, I think um, step three is my favorite step, uh, and so and and I think I did a good job of. Of framing the topics in a way that was relevant to them. And when they, when I was framing and they added some more stuff, they felt like I was missing something, added more stuff. I was able to capture those new values and, and use that as part of the framing. Um, and, um, and I think that together we did, a, we ran a transparent process. And so like kind of saying what um, I can do and what I couldn't do. I think I was good at that and checking in with you about um, both mediating and, and being, you know, 
co-mediators co and in this respect also co-trainers at the same time. I think I was uh, yeah. transparency with that. Um, I think uh, you did a great job of managing this sort of um, lifelessness of trying to mediate online and um, you especially, I find it especially challenging with um, giving them space to finish. And so there were several times when either we were over each other or we were over the participants and you did a great job of saying, no, no, please, you go ahead. Or no, Lisa, I do want to hear from you right now. Um, and kind of um, running the risk of over communicating is much better than um, accidentally making them feel stepped on. So mm -hmm. I think that you kind of, you would sometimes come back twice. No, no, I really do want to hear from you. Um, and putting them first. So I think that, that was a huge plus. Thank you. Um, the deltas for myself. So when I am not the one writing, it's harder for me to stay engaged and to be capturing the details. So I think there were, um, I need to figure out a strategy and when I'm not the one writing on how I can better support my, my co-mediator. And I think part of that too is, um, I, I keep threatening, but I haven't followed through on playing around with using um, another um, tool. I'm thinking like Google Docs to do the brainstorm in and see if it's easier to navigate us both um, typing on there at the same time. Um, I have, I've, you know, I have, I've known doing the sh sharing um, control of the, the, uh, the um, document can kind of stutter. Um, there can be a delay in typing, but I hadn't had the situation where I really couldn't get on there at all. So that's mm -hmm. new. Um, so um, that motivates me to look into that. Um, so that's my two. And two deltas for me? Um, I think um, I toward the second half of the listening stage, um, started to feel like I was doing more of the reflecting and I was looking for you to come in. And um, there were a couple of times where it was um, a, there could have been a lot of benefit to doing a feeling value reflection. Um, and I was staying away from it in order to not be unbalanced between the two of us. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that your point about them having the floor for almost the entire mediation is very, very important. And that's a huge strength of yours. And at the same time, I think there was almost like a, it felt, it felt like a zoning out at the second half of the listening stage. Okay. Um, because it was, because of the length of the silence um and i really can't think of any other um you were doing such a great job juggling all these different hats of mediator and trainer and and um and also host of this online process um uh i I guess it could be considered a delta to have left out the children's chores from the topics list. Mm -hmm. um, although, you know, that kind of back and forth with topics is very natural in a yeah. mediation. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And for yeah. you. Um, I think there were some good initial feeling and value reflections. Um, and that really landed with them. Um, and there was, the, I guess the second one is I think I did some strong win-win knitting, capturing both values from both participants on that topic and using it to prompt new ideas. Yeah. Um. I felt like the feelings and values, it, like, like one, just the way you demonstrate pulling together the feelings and values around the topic 
to make for a full reflection is just beautifully done in particular like and and capturing early on like the structure and routine and discipline that they were looking that um lisa was looking for and and how she was feeling judged and demeaned about how food was going um I just got a lot of pluses. I'm sorry, I didn't do a good job of vetting which two I would give. Um, and just in general, I just felt supported throughout the the process. I'll, I'll wrap it up with that. Um, Great, thank you. Um, a Delta at the beginning, my leading reflection, um, a big piece of it didn't land for Lisa because um, I used the term freedom for her and because um, because freedom for the children was such a big part of what Virginia was saying, the fact that I was talking about freedom from judgment wasn't landing for Lisa. Um, and later I was able to frame it as non-judgment, like she was looking for non-judgment. Um, but initially I was, I was phrasing it as, I was trying to phrase it around freedom from judgment, but I, I think I just said freedom. And she was interpreting that to mean about the children and thought that I was like flipping them. Um, so that was a delta. And then secondly, when I did the win-win knitting in stage four, um, I said, it sounds like you're looking around communication. Um, can you think of any solutions that will get you the sense of sharing and being heard and get you the respect and freedom from judgment that you're looking for? And so for Virginia, the word sharing, I think, was not a good frame on her value because, or sharing wisdom, because it sounded like a solution. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that was a really flawed value word mm -hmm. because it it's, has a solution within it. Gotcha. Um, one, I, the the process mapping at the beginning of step two kind of got skipped, so you jumped right into the open-ended question. Yes, yeah, I meant to say that. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're process mapping at the beginning of each uh, step um, to explain where what's happening in that step. And um, I would also add. Um, diversifying your distancing phrase um that, that'd be a, a, a teeny tiny one and, and then just let me add that um there there are a few times i i think generally when i'm writing up brainstorm ideas when i'm about to say and and this other idea that i would write that out as a separate idea mm -hmm. yes all right thank you so that is how we do feedback again um that was abbreviated. We would spend a lot more time. I have a lot of pluses um, for Caroline that we'll talk about offline. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you all and we will make sure that Community Mediation Maryland's contact information is um, near this recording so that you may ask, assess us if you have questions. And um, thank you so much for your time and, and, um, and viewing this recording. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I feel like people who are putting themselves forward to give mediation during this pandemic are really um, brave and committed volunteers and staff. So I'm really privileged to be part of that rollout. Thank you. Thank you.